This episode, we got Phoebe Jacobs, Queen of the Animal Castle, Julian's wife, uh, WRX whipping, S14 whipping, and just all around good person and definitely somebody you want on your side. <laughs> Phoebe knows all the goings on and she's a big, big uh, behind the scenes person, kind of keeping what you see going. And um, she's just one of the best. And we definitely are lucky to have her around and it's really cool to have her on here and she's got some really good backstories and some trash talk of uh julian and everyone else so um it's always been a goal for her to be on this um, and i'm happy we got to do it also this is one of the first ones we did in person with some new gear so it's we're working on it you know if you got any pointers shoot them my way um i'm just happy you guys are all doing this with me still so Thank you. Enjoy this one. Yeah. So you just got married. Just got married. It was kind of on a whim out of nowhere. Um, we went to Santa Cruz to celebrate our 15 year anniversary and got this like really fancy little beach bungalow right on the beach in Capitola. And... We went to, tried to get sushi, got super dressed up, went to this place he found online. <laughs> and we show up to the place and it's not fancy at all. There was only outdoor seating and their outdoor seating was like one of those heat lamps and like some plastic tables and chairs and like <laughs> not outside seating like you would expect. And we get, get out of the truck all dressed up and everybody just looks over at us. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable and I hate dressing up anyway. So yeah. for me to have a dress on and then have to go and stand out just like that was so chairs. uncomfortable. No, we didn't stay. Oh. We just ended up ordering the food to go and then took it back to the place and ate there, which was fine. The place yeah. was amazing. Did you stay dressed up for the meal? We did. Yeah. And <laughs> nice. it was like this really nice third level beach bungalow. So we were on like the roof of the house, pretty much looking out over the beach and there was a hot tub and the whole shebang and that in that evening we were in the hot tub and he was teaching me about space and you know all of his favorite things about space and <laughs> <laughs> I tried to pay attention and learn and then eventually we started talking about the cats because you know what else do we fucking talk about and I told him that Eventually, I wanted to have the same last name as them because I didn't want the cats growing up wondering why I have a different last name than the three of them. Because when they go to the vet, they're Jacobs. Yeah. Um, and just out of nowhere, he was like, let's elope. And I was like, excuse me, did you did you choke? Did you get some water in your mouth? <laughs> he was like, no, let's do it. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I figured, like, I better do this quick before he changes his mind. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he was too drunk or something. <laughs> and then, yeah. Like, I think probably less than two months later, we, he wanted to elope, do the whole courthouse thing. And I called the, I emailed the courthouse and the people were kind of like people at the DMV. Like they just didn't give a shit. Just, you know, hurry up and do what you got to do and get it over with. And I didn't really like that. So I decided to ask one of his childhood best friends if he would get ordained and just marry us here at the animal castle. And he was more than happy to do so. And <laughs> then Julian went into full panic mode, didn't want to do it, didn't want to have anyone around, was even too shy to have his friend Ryan, who married us, do it. Almost had a panic moment and backed out. And then I kind of put everything together and just left him out of the loop. And we just had his stepdad, my mom, the roommates, and one of my best friends come. We did it in the front yard, surprised him with an actual wedding dress. He told me that he thought wedding dresses were stupid and he'd never seen a woman in a wedding dress and thought, oh my God, she's so beautiful. And in my head, I was like, well, we're gonna change that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, yeah, I surprised him with a wedding dress and it was a perfect little day, quick, easy, it was a 10 minute ceremony probably. and. We had to repeat little vows that um, Ryan wrote. We didn't write our own vows. And both of us were so nervous. We stumbled through the vows and <laughs> survived. And yeah, we, we did it after 15 years. Yeah, I, uh, I like specifically remember uh, 
many times of it being like a conversation of like, yeah, we probably won't and probably, yeah. Because like you guys aren't going to have kids, obviously. No kids for sure. And both of us, we weren't really that worried about getting married. Neither of our parents were married. It like wasn't really a big thing. And, you know, being together for 15 years, we've lasted longer than most marriages these days anyway. So I don't think, yeah, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal or make that much of a difference, but we're both like really excited about it. And he's much more excited about it than I thought he would be, which is really sweet. And it's fun to have something new and be able to call him my husband and to be a wife. There's not much new after 15 years. So (laughs) it's exciting to have a little change. Yeah. Yeah, 15 years is a long time. You guys like you guys knew each other in high school, right? We did. We met in the seventh grade. Um, he was at my middle school for a spelling bee. I don't know what I was doing. I definitely was not in the spelling bee, but um, <laughs> he came to the spelling bee, and I, I was watching the spelling bee for a brief moment, and then we had mutual friends that had introduced us afterwards, and we've probably loved each other since that moment. I remember we would like sneak the phones late at night on school nights and call each other and whatnot. Um, and then our first day of high school, we went to the same high school and we had every class together. So it was like, it was just perfect. And I had a boyfriend all throughout high school. So Julian was just my best friend. And I just thought of him as like the sweet, he's too nice to be my boyfriend. He's too sweet. I'm going to stay with this idiot instead (laughs) and learn the hard way. (laughs) I feel like that's like, I feel like that's a lot of girls at that age. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was definitely the best friend role a lot. (laughs) Maybe I'm just bitter. (laughs) Yeah, I looking back now, I wish I wouldn't have wasted so much time, but it seems like everything worked out for the best. Um, yeah, and then in high school, we we were pretty much best friends. We were always together. We made it a point to try to have every class together so we could hang out. And we also tended to fail a lot of classes. So we ended up <laughs> in summer school together and um, he got his first 240 little hatch. God, probably sophomore year of high school. And that year for summer school, I would meet him at summer school. We'd get in his 240, drive into town because we went to this tiny podunk high school out in the middle of nowhere. And we'd drive into town and he'd practice yanking his e-brake and hitting this one corner and drifting it. And I always had so much fun in his passenger seat. I don't know why, but I was never scared. And I was always down to go. Sometimes on our lunch break, we would hop in and drive down Highway 1 and see how far we could go in 15 minutes and then try to make it back in 15 minutes before the bell ring. (laughs) Yeah, I think by the end of high school, he'd been through like maybe four or five 240s. I don't know. It's probably wrong, but (laughs) quite a few of them. (laughs) Yeah. Did he go through them just because he changed them no he crashed them Uh. um but you know to his mom and um all the adults it was always a deer those damn deer will just run out and you know make you crash (laughs) i remember one day he wasn't at school and um i went to the office and called his house and he was all bummed because he had crashed his 240 into a ditch and i cut school that day and drove back to his house to see him and he was just so sad on the couch so bummed out his car was totaled and his mom was like, those deer, you just got to be so careful. And then he went in his room and he told me the truth that he tried to hit a corner too hard and just went off into the ditch and his car was like sideways in the ditch. So he's, so he's always, he's always like pushed. For sure. He's always pushed. And I remember when he discovered drifting, he was like, you got to come see this. You got to come try it. And just hearing him explain what he was doing. I was like, you're fucking crazy. That sounds so sketchy. And his 240s always had bald tires, you know, always threaded. And he was just known for being such a maniac. He, no one could beat him. He was the fastest. Even kids who had, there was a kid who had like a turbo eclipse and Julian would beat him in his stock 240. Like, yeah, because you guys like grew up in like, there was like a lot of back roads. The middle of nowhere. Yeah. Pretty much out on the coast. I'm from Bodega Bay, one coastal town, and he's from Point Reyes, which is like probably closer an hour away from each other up and down the coast. But yeah, he was just known for being such a maniac. He would, <laughs> we called it the Bay Road, Highway 1, and he would run from the cops. He would <laughs> get far enough ahead of them and then pull in a pull out and back in and they'd go right by and then he'd go in the opposite direction and he'd be out there trying to race guys in their Ferraris on the weekend, just doing leisurely drives. <laughs> and like, just such a maniac. But for some reason, I was just, I was never scared. I don't know what it was. And I'm still to this day, not scared. The only time I've ever been scared was in Japan when we were on the toge. And it was 
very dark and he was incredibly blind before he got his glasses yeah <laughs> and, and he had like he, he couldn't see he like had those eye drops because like on top of his already yeah. bad vision he like his <laughs> eyes were all messed up yeah yeah and then he went off into the ditch and like hit the cliff side thank god and i was like i'm getting out I'm like i'm not gonna die out here tonight with you <laughs> and then i just watched him for the rest of the night but yeah aside from that i've just always been in his passenger seat and then every now and then he'd let me drive and taught me how to rev match and I'd just drive his car around. I still don't know how to rev match. <laughs> I need a lesson. It takes practice. Yeah. Anytime I try to do it to be cool, I'd make a fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So I met you guys, I think in like 2011. And at that point, Julian is, had already, you know, like, yeah, you guys live together obviously you guys have been together since like oh six yeah yeah long time (laughs) yeah and it was all it was like it was very much like dory your dog the child r.i.p r.i.p doodle (laughs) uh, and the cats and the drift car and like that was life yep and all the animals were named after drifting. Yeah. And yeah, drifting has pretty much been life. And in the beginning, it was it was rough. There was a lot of sacrifice and a lot of what he needed and what he wanted to do to make this dream come true. And I was okay with that because I'm not really good at anything. I don't have any like <laughs> amazing special skills. You know, like when someone has an amazing talent that they have such passion for and they're so gifted, like how can you not support them if you love them? You know, and I've always thought like, it's just so cool that he can hop in a car and pretty much any car and do what he does. And yeah, for many years we lived in shitty places. We rented a room with shitty roommates, tiniest little room with the cats and the dog and him, his giant self and all of our shit. And we lived in this place for $400 a month for like three years just so he could build his car and get everything going and that was like that was the s14 yeah he was building and getting it together i I remember the first time it came because like when you get in when you get into drifting you're like how how do these people even do this like it's so much money and i remember the first time i came over I was like, you know, you kind of like expect people like <laughs> to like you have think money. You people are ballers, yeah. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, this is their room. Like, Wait not a second. that it was like, not that it was a not nice room. It was just, it just, it was small. You yeah, know? like for it was sure. like, I was like two people sharing this like tiny, tiny small spot. bedroom that like you know, in a garage that wasn't even a garage. It was full of shit, and you know, like most normal people's garages, just have yeah. stuff in them, not yeah. cars, and a car in the middle of all the shit, and yeah. We've lived in many different uncomfortable situations, but God, I'd probably say, I think around 2010, maybe 2012, we finally moved into our own spot. And that's when we moved in with Al and got our own little place. And that made a world of difference for me. And then he also had finally had a garage, but still too small, not enough room for all the shit that we had. And he yeah, was, didn't, weren't the neighbors like coming after oh, yeah. you? <laughs> the neighbors hated us. We had the. Um, Did you get like a chop shop ordinance? Or yeah, something? they thought we had a chop shop. We had like what are those? The parking people. They would come along and like mark, mark our tires yeah. every day, and then constantly giving us tickets. And we were getting tickets for like the cars we had parked in the driveway with expired tags. <laughs> <laughs> like just such a disaster, and the garage was full, so full of stuff. And he was you know swapping motors and doing all kinds of crazy shit in the middle of the suburbs. And then um, we got the offer to move into this place. And fortunately we did because like less than a year after we moved out of that place, the Santa Rosa fires happened in 2018 and that home burnt to the ground. And those people had like enough time to grab their dogs. And by the time they were in their car, it was on fire. Yeah. Like imagine, imagine all. Yeah. Lost everything. Yeah. Imagine all. Like I, yeah, I remember that house. Like there was (laughs) many cars, many cars, so much stuff. But yeah, we um, we came to look at this place and we took one look at it and I was like, I'm not even going to get excited. There's no way we can afford this place. Like it's so beautiful, custom home, so much space, huge shop, huge garage. And we ended up getting an amazing deal. So we loaded up all the shit from the tiny house and brought it to the big house and just filled this place up with shit. 
<laughs> yeah, like, wasn't it one of your customers at work? It was. Um, I worked at a jet boat shop and he'd been coming in for years and I taught him what drifting was and he was really into it. thought it was so cool. So we'd always shoot the shit, talk drifting. And one day I just happened to tell him how I hated living in the suburbs and everybody hated us living there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was tired of getting parking tickets and whatnot. And then he shot me an email later that day and was like, I have this place out in Pengrove if you're interested here's the address, go check it out. And so we, once we found it, yeah. <laughs> we really got lost in the depth of the top of the hill. Um, but yeah, once we found it, we only had Al as a roommate originally, and it was a little expensive for just the three of us. And Michael D magic had been wanting to come out to California from Georgia. And we had only met him once at final bout. And then mm -hmm. Julian had been friends with him online for years, but it's like, you know, kind of went, went against everything you're taught. Like, don't meet a stranger online and then, yeah. like, have them move in with you, you know, yeah. like, just in case they're a murderer or something. <laughs> yeah, it could have very easily been an episode yeah, of Catfish. it could have, but it worked out well. Michael is not a murderer, thank goodness. He's really that sweet. We, allegedly, <laughs> that, that we know of. Not yet, but... <laughs> he murders the graphics, you know? <laughs> Got them liveries down. Um, but, yeah, he ended up driving his S14 out here all the way from Georgia, yeah. Just with whatever he could fit. And most people haven't seen that car, but it's like slammed. Well, it's so nice. Yeah. It's really nice. It's really yeah. clean and very low. But yeah, he he ventured his way out here and we moved in. And God, that was like already six years ago. So we've been here for quite some time. But this place has been such a blessing because we have the whole shop. Julian's been able to grow heat maker and fabricate all of his side projects that he does. We've built quite a few cars. It looks like a fucking junkyard, but you know, diamonds in the rough. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of projects here. We'll just say that a lot of projects. Every roommate has m multiple projects. <laughs> Too many projects. <laughs> I counted the other day. I'm not going to say the number, but it's it's yeah. so bad. It's so bad. When he wanted the Z, I was like, you need to get rid of this Lexus. It's been it had like green moss growing on it. Like it'd been. <laughs> Did sitting, he finally sell it? Uh, we had the junkyard like come pick it up. Oh, yeah. I think they gave him like hundred and twenty dollars. Which oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, hey, whatever. We'll it's better it. than just <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> so much better. And then you know the Z filled its parking spot, so it's not like we really made more room, but you know, upgrades. Yeah, I'm happy that I was, at first I was like. Why did you get another car? But I'm happy. I'm happy you got the Z. I think it's like you've got. He's got to have like backups. <laughs> yeah. When he told me about the Z, I said no immediately, and I was like, "Look at all these cars. Like you don't need this." And he's yeah. like, "But I do need it." And and then he used the whole excuse of you know it can be a test car for this, and I can make these parts and blah blah blah. And mm. I just kept saying no, and then probably like two weeks later, he texted me while I was at work and was like, Hey babe, do you want to go for a drive with me? <laughs> and I just responded with, what are you buying? And uh... he was like, I'm going to go pick up that Z. And as crazy as he is and as crazy as some of his ideas are, he's always made pretty good choices and he's always been responsible enough to make sure we're taken care of. Our rent is paid. You know, he's, he's never sacrificed responsibility, excuse me, for a car. So, you know, what am I going to do? Tell him, no, you bust your ass working a full-time job and multiple side hustles and you can't have what you want. You know, like I can't really say no. Yeah. Plus a Z would be kind of fun. I've always wanted a Z. So yeah, there you go. We went and picked it up and I'm glad we did because Grange was so much fun last weekend. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you got to drive it. <laughs> yeah, me too. It, I was a little scared and, you know, I've only driven, driven Grange once before and it's the only track I've ever driven. I'm used to cone courses and, you know, the skid pad, so... It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, because you, so like, I guess most people won't know this, but like you guys shared a 240. Like that was your only car. Yeah, we've shared a few cars down in the beginning. Um, but yeah, he had um, a black hatch that he had swapped an SR into. And we would share that. And, you know, whoever worked first, we would, one would drive and drop them off and then go to work themselves and then come back. And it was a whole fucking thing. But yeah, I worked it. Um, the Macy's cosmetics counter mm -hmm. as a Clinique person and the Clinique girls have to wear like a white lab coat with like all black and they have to look neat and kept. So I would put my lab coat, roll it up and put it in a plastic bag because <laughs> <laughs> the exhaust would leak into the car and you would smell like exhaust. Like yeah. my hair would smell like exhaust. So I'd have to like try to keep my clothes fresh, drive to work, park this fucking beat 
hatch with an SR and go into my cosmetics job, put my shit together, work, whatever, and then get off and go pick him up in the car. And I remember so many times I would pass by guys and they would be so confused. Like, and I'd be so confused as well because like in the beginning I was kind of embarrassed. Like these cars are so rough. They're so loud. Like it looks like a total piece of shit to a normal person, yeah. but to somebody who knows about drifting or knows, you know, is into modified cars. Like I got so many thumbs up, thumbs up and like sick car. I'd be like, why? I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> but yeah, it grew on me very fast. And I've always loved cars and kind of been into cars. I wanted a 240 for my first car, but my hillbilly boyfriend was like, no, nah, I'm not going to have one of those fucking rice rockets. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up getting the 86 Honda Accord instead. But my second car was my silver 240. And Julian went down, I think it was like an old shock drifting car or something. It was huh. also very rough straight pipe super fucking oh low. so it was like a drift like, car it was a full drift car you didn't just go like buy some old no. ladies 240 i SX. remember my uncle was like why are you buying this like you need a dependable car and i was like no it's good julian says it's good and <laughs> yeah and then i remember like the first day i had it it was like it was march it was really rainy it had a welded diff also and i was at a light waiting to make a left pouring down rain and i take off put it in second and just completely pitched it fully sideways, like spun out in the middle of the intersection, ended up in the same, like in the right direction and just put it in first and kept going. And like, I just remember shaking, like, holy shit, what the fuck was that? And then Julian was like, oh yeah, I probably should have told you like the welded diff, you have to go really easy when you're shifting because you'll, you'll kick out. And yeah, I learned real quick to counter steer and what to expect. <laughs> bald tires a welded diff in the middle of winter that's like, that's like so typical <laughs> yeah. julian like that's, yeah, that's oh yeah much, by the way that's pretty much probably should have told drifting you career is oh yeah you'll be fine you'll figure it out <laughs> so good but yeah that little car it i had it for a long time and again so many people were so confused all my girlfriends were like why 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 do you drive this thing <laughs> Or they would offer to drive. We can take my car. It's fine. <laughs> um, we would love to take uh, not your car if you do. All right, I'm going to fix these mic stands. because it's... Okay. it's like slowly just... This hits the window. I don't even remember what we were talking about. It's... Me either. Welcome back from our technical difficulties. My first time. This is my first time. It's my first time. Be gentle. Thank you for tuning in to the Palmcast. You should have called it that. The Palmcast? The Palmcast. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty good name. The Palmist Cast. Julian said that I should call it uh, Pal Palmer's Podcastle. What's your hassle? <laughs> <laughs> so if you think that I should have called it that, don't tell me. It was, uh, it's silly. The goodest palm cast. Goodest, yeah. Well, I didn't want to call it like anything to do with palms because I didn't want to get flagged for like sexual inappropriate uh, mm. things. I'm sure you'll Let's... do that in another way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably this episode. The, the, sand, the, the <laughs> yeah, the sandy palm cast. The uh, the dirty peas. Yeah. Yeah, so people, no one knows that, but you and I obviously have dark, dirty sense of humor. It, and all. Yeah, it's just something about when we get together, it just everything goes south. On our in the best way, <laughs> <laughs> just vulgar. On our long, long trips to racetracks in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, on our drives to go places to drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was talking about that last week. I drive for a living. And then I drive for a hobby and then I have to drive to those places to interact with that hobby. So my life is just driving. 100%. I drive my life away. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, a <laughs> you're a, in the cannabis industry. I'm in the cannabis industry. I work for the biggest cannabis distribution company, probably in the world. They're Dang. slowly taking over everything. Um, yeah. And I drive a big, giant van full of weed and I deliver multiple brands to dispensaries all over Northern California. So I'm kind of like the UPS dude, but with weed. Weed PS. No, I'm not a dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's chill though. I like it. It's... Do you have like green uniforms? No, no uniforms yet. Thank God. I would assume though, with how corporate this company is, that eventually the drivers will probably be in some kind of ridiculous uniform. Yeah, but... you guys are gonna have like ads on TV. Yeah, it's it's crazy because you have all of these like yuppies that come from Coca-Cola and Gap and you know all these different places now in the cannabis industry and. They just want to advertise wherever they can. So our vans look a little bit different than most of the other vans, which is not something you want when you're out and about with a van full of cannabis and cash. Um, yeah, because you can't like you you have to do the money exchanges. Yes, you have to do the money exchanges. You also have to unload the product and take it into the dispensary, um, which can be a little scary at times. San Francisco, they're not allowed to have armed guards. So most of the security guards are like old men that are sitting on a stool half asleep, <laughs> not paying attention at all. Um, sometimes in the city, you have to park, you know, like a block away from the place and wheel your cart uh, full of product down the street. Yeah. And yeah, it's super sketchy. So fortunately, I don't have to go um, to San Francisco or really anywhere in the East Bay because it's pretty dangerous for us out there. I do like more of Sacramento and up north, which is a little bit safer, but it's chill. We get to show up, you see your customers, which... They're other professionals, so it's not like you're dealing with the general public, which is nice. And yeah, just unload the shit, count the cash, which sometimes can be a giant fucking pile, and then throw it in your van and off to the next one. So after a while, like, you know, seeing large amounts of cash doesn't really, I'm like numb to it now. For one, it's not mine, so I don't really fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I deal with it so much that it's not, it's not that big of a deal to me. Julian and my mom don't necessarily love that I do this job. It's not the safest, but the cannabis industry is so new that there's a lot of opportunity for women to make equal pay and to have, you know, higher management positions. And it's the best paying job I've ever had. And it's not bad. I show up, say hi, get in my van, leave for the day, I'm out and about all day, come back, drop my shit off and I go home. So it's not too bad. Yeah. And it definitely helped that I was able to tell the guy when I applied that I drift and I tow a drift car and, you know, I have all this extra experience. He was really stoked on that. And I think I probably hear the most, you ever drift your van? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go out there drifting. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's a real knee slapper. Yeah. I, the last company I worked at, they wouldn't let me take the company <laughs> trucks or cars ever because they knew it drifted. And then it's like, dude, I'm not going to go drift the Honda fit. Like, yeah. And it's not a fucking sideshow. It's yeah. not a takeover. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go drift the van. Like, yeah. Nor do I want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's like hard to explain to people like that what it is that we actually do. Yeah, for sure. It's like you, you get the, you get the like, Ken Block thing, or you get the Fast and the Furious, to, yeah, Tokyo, Tokyo Drift, Drift. <laughs> or or like they just think you're gone and doing like donuts. Yeah, I had my human resources guy. Everybody at work knows I drift, so he was new. He just came on and he stopped me one day and was like, "I hear that you drift," and I was like, "Oh yeah," and I was telling him about it, and he was like, "Oh, that's really awesome." My 16 year old nephew was just killed in a um, sideshow accident, <laughs> and I was like completely different <laughs> it's yeah. like we don't do any of that um, we always keep it on the track and you know explain to him like when you have sponsors and you run you know side businesses and have your own companies you try to be responsible and be a good yeah influence and not disappoint your sponsors or anybody else or kill anyone <laughs> that's definitely the goal people always think that drifting is so much more dangerous than it is yeah, like, that's for, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you do what? That's so scary. And I think it's so much faster. Like people think I'm in my car doing 100 miles an hour. I'm like, oh, don't be silly. 85. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, there's there's definitely kind of yeah. The public doesn't necessarily. They see like they see like a car out of control, and they think like. But I mean, I, to to be fair, like a lot of people who are like starting out even when i was starting out like i hit stuff oh i'm uh, for sure out of control i mean <laughs> you know that was me in the dirt last weekend out of grange <laughs> <laughs> we just came in a little hot you know uh, it was good you, you gotta find the edge <laughs> yeah we found the edge 
We were the edge. <laughs> I I have found the edge many times. I found the edge later. That night. <laughs> the amount of dust and dirt that gets in the car and in your mouth and eyes is unbelievable. Well, when you go off track. Yeah. Yeah, especially <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. It's like this like weird special. Yeah, it, you want it to be dust. soft so it stops you, I guess, but it also just completely coats you and everything around. Yeah. I think there's like still dust on in in and on my car that I'll sure. like never get off. The Z is still on the trailer covered in dust right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think Julian found the edge later that night also. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He was he was chucking backies and I think like one of them. He told me he deep. got a mouthful of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like the one where he wished the window was up, probably. Yeah. When it was working. Yeah. <laughs> I was in there with it stuck up, just sweating the whole time I was driving and then just randomly tried it and it went down. Mm. I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. Leave it like that. That's what we do. Yeah. The Z was so different than driving the S14. It like, for one, it has all of like the interior on the inside. There's no sharp pieces on the door panel to slice you open (laughs) if you move your arm or, you know, (laughs) get thrown around in the car. Um, It was definitely... Faster than the S14, which made me wish the 14 had more power for sure. But I still like driving the S14 more than the Z. Yeah. I mean, that's just, yeah, that car's set up really well. Yeah. I think I've been pretty spoiled too. Like the S14 just drives so easy. And then the Z, another car that drifts really easy. So I look better than I am. <laughs> I don't know about that. I literally just 10 minutes ago watched a video of a 350Z like hit one of the light poles at Grange. I saw that and immediately thought, thank God that wasn't me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't. That's just the difference between, I think, girls and guys too. Guys have no fear and they'll not be super confident in what they're doing and still just go full fucking blast to where like, I feel like girls have more of that like common sense and fear factor where like, I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to hit the entry at Grange, so I just took it easy. You know, yeah. like I didn't want to take out their brand new lights or go off the track and run anybody over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can at, at this point in my life, I can definitely agree with that. But I think there's, I think there's guys that are like that too. Yeah. But I would say that the like the ratio is probably, I don't know. Yeah, and something about when guys are first starting, they just want to go hard, like. <laughs> And they're new to drifting. Just go in. Yeah. I I guess you could say that uh, in in most things guys do. True. (laughs) True, true, true. (laughs) They're like, oh, oh, there's a, there's a, I I don't just hit it with the big hammer. (laughs) Yeah. Or like when I first started drifting, Julian said, just put it in third and go. You'll be fine. Oh, I don't have to be in third. I can. Try the basics first. <laughs> <laughs> we can also both uh, agree that Julian might be the worst drifting coach. The worst. He's really good if you already know what you're doing and you just need some like finesse or some fine tuning on your technique. But when it comes to like bare bone basics, I didn't really get that. Like he took me out to the Thunder Hill skid pad, the small skid pad, and was like, yeah, just third's probably fine just go ahead and go and I just spent the day aggressively spinning out like time and time again to the point where I just didn't even want to do it anymore it wasn't even fun and then Ryan Cotto got in with me a driver who had training and actually had someone teach him the basics um and he was like why don't we just try donuts just start with the basics and maybe (laughs) spin some donuts and explained to me you know donuts and oversteer and understeer and made so much more sense and was so much more fun just practicing that and um, getting down the basics. But I think that's a lot of girls that get into drifting that they don't get the basics because I don't know if it's guys play video games early on. So they understand it a little bit more. I don't know what it is about boys, but they seem to, they just get it in the beginning quicker. I don't know what it is. That's probably that. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to have that all girls event um, a couple years ago because I wanted to have, a space where girls could come and learn and spin out all day and have it be okay and not have a line of guys behind them rushing them or yeah. not wanting their they, turn. Where they and, feel like they're being judged. Yeah, or, or being embarrassed. Like, it was already 
I felt like there was extra pressure for me just because I'm Julian's girlfriend that like people expected me to be able to do it. And I, luckily enough, I caught on pretty quick, probably because I've been around drifting for so long and I literally would fall asleep at night to Julian watching drift videos on YouTube <laughs> and just like the sounds of drifting as I'm trying to fall asleep and just being in the passenger seat with him and watching it nonstop. I pretty much like I live the goodest cast also, you know, like when mm. I listen to you and your podcast, it's just like I'm outside with the guys listening mm. to them talk about drifting and <laughs> and how this event went and how that car drove. And yeah, it's just I think it's just ingrained into my brain. Yeah. No matter no matter how much you don't want, <laughs> no it, to be. I want it to be or not. <laughs> yeah i think yeah i i thought that girls event was pretty cool like i remember i remember alex and sherry like i think i think alex alex Shea and sherry come on i think are they did they take did she take his last name i don't know anyway they just got married too oh yeah 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 um but they were like rushing to make that event and like sherry was like very very like into going to that i was so excited to have her she's such an og and such a badass and it, yeah, her and Missy and I got to throw some runs down and I was so nervous to have her behind me because at that point I was just throwing out Sherry's. prayers left and right. Yeah, and she knew what she was doing. So Sherry. I was like, I'm just going to go in the front and hope for the best. And Sherry is like, watch out. I would say Sherry, Sherry. Okay, so Sherry doesn't hold back at all and first run will go all in and Alex will like work his way up. Yeah. Which is really funny because yeah. it's like, usually that's not the case, but like Sherry will just be like, all right, I'm just going to floor it and see what happens. And Alex is like, no, please. <laughs> Warm yeah, up. I love that. Yeah, we laid down some pretty sick runs. And then I think like one of the last runs, Missy got a little bit behind. She late start or something. I'm not sure what it was. And in the video, you see I come down the hill and hit the corner and then Sherry. And then like out of nowhere, you see Missy super hot just coming in. And then she goes past the corner and you just hear. And she had like just went way too hot and like smashed her rear end into oh. the wall and ended up like destroying the back of her car. And it took her like a couple years to finally decide to like cut the whole rear end off. She called it her booty transplant and just like <laughs> chopped the whole rear off and had to like fix it and cover it with, you know, fucking, I don't really know exactly what she did, but, but she fixed with her it. over fenders and her bumper, you can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was really cool, though. And I, I think my favorite part of that event was looking in the mirror and seeing 20 cars behind me and knowing that every car was a girl. Yeah. And we had that many girl drivers. And this was like, what, three years ago now? So That's, I'm sure there's even more now. Even like lately, I've noticed that there's like a, a big, a big like resurgence of uh, girls. Yeah, drifting. for sure. There's like a big, um, I don't know, it just seems like they're. It's our there's turn. A, yeah, there's like a lot of girls getting in, like especially in the last like two years or so. Like the car, like I feel like there's the percentage of girls in the car community is growing. I love it, and it's like, like I said, so many years, you know, I, I sacrificed and helped Julian build his car and get him to where he wanted to be, and then to finally get my own car and be able to have my own journey and experience was really exciting, and I think that's what a lot of girls. Girls are tired of just watching and sitting there bored, you know? Like, yeah. If you can't beat them, join them. But yeah, it, Missy and I get hit up all the time to do another girls event. So maybe that's you should. a good sign. You need to do it. I feel like you get girls from all over. Because like you had people come from like far for that. We had people come from all over. And also the Drift Kitchen girls, um, they were so stoked about our event and it inspired them to start their, the drift kitchen and they yeah, were I heard killing that. it. I heard that on the, I listened cause you were on their yes. podcast and I listened to that one and then I was like, Oh shit. I didn't know Phoebe was like the, I didn't know either. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. Those girls are all so sweet and I'm so proud of them. They've seriously been killing it. They were supposed to come out to Thunder Hill and do one of their drift kitchen events out there. And then, with COVID, it messed up the schedule and set everything back, and they ended up not being able to have their event. So they didn't hit California, which was a bummer because I really wanted to drive with them. But hopefully, in the future. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I think they have like a good thing going. Like, sure. uh, seeing that kind of like 
all over the place. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like, uh, I mean, they do them in like Texas and all over. Yeah. yeah. I think with, with me, we were doing super D at the time and it, there was just so much event planning going on under our roof that like, it just seemed like too much work to take on while we were planning so many other big events and getting cars ready and all of that, you know, and I, I need Julian's help to an extent, you know, to set up the course and to make sure it's a sick course. And yeah. the first course we did at our girls event, he made a really legit course and I took one look at it and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to, nobody's going to be able to do this, babe. Like I was like <laughs> mad at him and I was like, everybody's intimidated. Like nobody's going to be able to do this. We're all beginners. And he was like, too bad. If you don't try, you're not going to get better. Like, just go try it out. Yeah. And by the end of the day, everybody loved it and was like proud of themselves that they could do it. And yeah, it was fun and exciting. So I just, it was fun, but it was a lot to take on at that time. Okay. So it kind of just faded away. But I'm happy that the Drift Kitchen girls were able to keep theirs going and keep events for girls around the United States. I'd really love to get Kayla McNutt down here more and be able to drive with her because she's a fucking savage. She's really good. She's a beast. Yeah, they're like, what's their team? Chick, uh, Chick Flick? Chick Flick. And then they, that's her and Jessica. And then they added Nicole to their final bout team. They were the first mm -hmm. girls to have a final bout team. Yeah, I pretty saw awesome. That. And they were like yeah, ripping. They rip. And their cars looked so good. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're all so cool. And I think they got invited to Shano also. Dang. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Doing it for the ladies. Good old Shano, man. Yeah. Love that place. I actually really like Shano. Me too. <laughs> but, uh, good old- 6,000 acres. <laughs> 6,000 acres of water. What a little gem. Yeah, it's a cult town. It really, yeah, it's something for sure. Simba was telling me it's like yeah. legitimately like a cult. No, town. I know. Remember, I wanted to infiltrate and go <laughs> in. <laughs> we could put on some handmade clothes and make our way in. Yeah. Did Just you cover the tattoos? <laughs> when uh, when you okay, obviously when you first started out and Julian was drifting like a little bit, did you ever see yourself like traveling internationally to do this? Um, no, I definitely never imagined it would be what it's been like we've done so much and so many cool things and it's become so normal to me that sometimes I have to stop and like remind myself how crazy this is and how not normal it is yeah. like and that we're literally not only living our dreams but living so many other people's dreams that aren't going to be able to do this you know it's just yeah. a, a far-fetched dream for most people um but yeah, it feels good. And it's it feels good to know that I did the right thing by supporting him and sacrificing so much in the beginning and believing in him because, you know, there were times where I was like, what the fuck are we doing? And, you know, other people yeah. in my life were like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and yeah, and, you yeah you've been you've been ride or die for a very long time, a really long time. And it's like, like I said, when you love someone so much and they have such a passion and such a gift, like. How can you not support them? You know, it'd be yeah. one thing if he was blowing our rent money and being irresponsible, but True. he's always made sure we were okay first and there's still been able to do it. There's definitely been dudes like that. For that sure. Met and For sure. There's been dudes like that. And also like, I mean, you can pick and choose, right? I could have a boyfriend who's out partying and drinking all the time with his friends yeah. or a boyfriend who's out in the shop all the time working on his car, you know, like yeah. it's. It's definitely been a sacrifice and there's been a lot of, you know, long nights and rough days and bummers <laughs> and yeah. disappointments. But I, I always like, I always like to, I always like to use the example because people, you know, people always ask like, oh, you do that. It must be expensive. And I'm just like, I mean, do you go to Vegas? Do you like have guns? Like, what's your hobby? Like, what do yeah. you do? Do you play golf? you know like, what do you throw money at yeah like, <laughs> like are you struggling to get by like i get it you know like but i was able to go drifting when i worked at best buy and stuff you yeah know? so it's oh, like for sure just seeing i mean I, yeah i remember when i met you guys you were sharing a uh, dodge neon plymouth 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 like, it was neon like, plymouth neon so it's the bootleg version yeah <laughs> And, and and the S14, and those were your only cars. Those were our only cars. The S14 was like fully caged, gutted, had yeah. bucket seats with like full harness. And I would drive it like, I got pulled over in it once. And <laughs> the cop was like, registration and insurance. And I was like, yeah, because <laughs> I had the harness on. And I was like, 
one second. <laughs> I like take the harness off and, and he was like, what are you doing in this? <laughs> I was like, it's my boyfriend's car. And he was like, okay, well, I don't remember what it was, probably exhaust. Tell your boyfriend to fix this or whatever. And yeah. they let me go. And then I just always kept my car in Julian's name. So that way when I got pulled over, I could be like, oh, it's my boyfriend's car and just play dumb. Yeah. And I've been pulled over for everything in the book. Like too low, too bald the tires, no front license plate, modified exhaust, like anything you could think of I've been pulled over for. And I think I've maybe gotten two tickets, two fix it tickets in like my whole time of driving these cars around. That's pretty good. So girls out there, that's the trick. Just put your car in your boyfriend's name and then play dumb with the cops. Make sure he's ride or die. Though. Yeah, make sure he's ride or die. You don't want your car to disappear, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest. I was like, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty envious of your like ride or die nature for, for, uh, Julian, like in drifting and stuff. Cause I, I felt like I had to work for that a bit more <laughs> like, with uh, my previous relationship. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, Julian, Julian definitely is always kind of, he like has showed this kind of like, natural ability or whatever so i mean it's at the same time it's it's not like you were just like he says he's gonna be a rapper like yeah. i gotta have his back you know like, i hear he's a real dope rapper yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, i don't know i don't know if i was just blinded by love because i love him so much like we're sickos when it comes to each other we're we love each other. We can be with each other all day, all night. Like we'll have our little, you know, spats here and there, but it's nothing that lasts long. And yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. And ours is very rare. It's very seldom that we're in any kind of argument. I mean, we definitely scream at one another. I'm sure you've been there a time or two, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's usually like a long drift adventure or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Tensions high, man. Like, for sure. These, doing, it is not an easy life drifting. Doing international trips where like, <laughs> yeah. you're not going out to like, where are we going to eat dinner tonight? You know, like, it's like, how are we going to get back? We where the fuck are we? Yeah. <laughs> My phone's about to die. It's, it's six o'clock in the morning and we're leaving end style. I've been in the car asleep for hours at that point. Yeah. 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 But like I was saying, I don't know if I was just like blinded by love or what it was, but I've just, I've always believed in him so much and it's it seemed to have worked this far. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's worked out. It's worked out, but it's also been a lot of hard work. It's not like it came easy or the, yeah. like we said earlier, people, will see our cars and think that you're a baller, right? Because you have the nicest wheels and the best kit or whatever it may be. And they'll think that you're something that you're not or you come from money or whatever it may be. Yeah, but I've gotten that a lot. Yeah, actually. and there's not many people that really know what goes into it. The blood, sweat, tears, like literally blood, sweat, and tears and yeah. so much fucking hard work that goes into it. It's nonstop. Like... Julian is nonstop. Even when he is stopped and sitting still, you can see his wheels are turning constantly of what he needs to do or what needs to get done or who he needs to reach out to or whatever it may be. It's it's a constant hustle. And yeah. I I actually called him two days ago and I was like, hey man, I gotta, I gotta like, I gotta, I gotta say my piece, man. Like, cause uh, you know, we 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 talk shit to each other, we're friends, you know, that's what we do. And like Julian's a little spacey and like forget shit. Oh my shit. god. And <laughs> In the last, like, I don't know, like, month or two, I've been, like, really busy with work. And then, like, I've been trying to drift a lot. Like, and he did then and will always, like, continue to try and, like, do a lot of events. And get he tries to do, like, a lot before each one. And then he's got heat maker and this and that. And it's, like, the other day I was, like, okay, I got to edit this podcast. And then I have, like, I got to send out all these stick or you gotta send out these stickers not all these stickers like, <laughs> i gotta send out some stickers and i need to like do this and then i have to do all this for work still and then like i have to prep I, like i have to prep my car for final bout i was literally like on a camping trip and i woke up in the morning and i was like i can't be here like <laughs> i can't like, enjoy I, myself i was like i have to do two i was like to have so much stuff to do this week and then i like I really, and I'm like forgetting stuff. And I realized like, oh, it's, he's not like that, but he just does a lot of shit. So it was, was kind of like, it was kind of like this realization, like, oh, you know. Yeah, it's a lot. He is spacey and he has a lot of shit going at the same time. So it's, it's yeah. a double, <laughs> it's a double whammy. Yeah. 
I try to help him as much as I can. I, I'm the kind of person where I can look at a situation and I can see what needs to be done and prioritize and kind of make a list and check stuff off. So I think guys like us need girls. Like yeah. It's you. very common that I'll come out to the shop and like try to help him organize and focus and even just cleaning the shop today. Cause that's mm. his favorite thing to do is clean the shop. Yeah. So romantic. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But it definitely takes a special, a special breed of woman to put up with a boyfriend that drifts. I'm sure any motorsport, it's probably pretty similar, but drifting is just so ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not like when you get to like, when you get to the racetrack, it's like, all right, time for champagne. And you know, like I'll sit in the box and watch him. Like, Yeah. No, there's no box. Yeah. <laughs> the box is the truck. <laughs> yeah. I'll sit in the box. I'll sit in the truck and park the truck him. somewhere where I can see the track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i try and find one of the track ladies or one of the one of your friends to drift wives smoke, one of the drift wives to smoke with and, yeah and find someone to hot box the truck with me that's how i survived like the first years of it for sure yeah just smoking tons of weed and watching the drifting like remember the days at thunder hill when there there was no drift photographers or videographers like it was literally me out in the field at Thunder Hill on the full track with a little Sony point and shoot, like recording Julian's runs, oh, like in I didn't the know freezing that. cold rain, like four jackets on, like filming. Oh, like, I didn't know that. I've been filming drifting for 15 years now. Yeah, I know. You got, you got like a really <laughs> sick clip of me and you showed it to me and you're like, oh, I got like this like pole in the way a little bit. And I was I'm so like, mad at myself. I'm like, this is a sick <laughs> clip. Like, I don't like it, does nothing, it doesn't ruin it at all. I, it was like so interesting to me that 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 was like something that you caught as like a well because problem. julian would have been like what why'd you get the pole <laughs> you know, like, dude he's, remember how i yelled at you about zooming <laughs> oh yeah yeah you gotta he's... fucking zoom <laughs> <laughs> yeah he definitely roasted me about the the all yeah. the clips from uh the new, new zealand, zealand trip. <laughs> yeah. it was this hard. shit is so hard to film <laughs> It's just videos of Palmer shooting the sky. <laughs> I was, well, he, before that, it was, we, you and me had the conversation about zooming. You got to zoom. He's like, you go, like, cause you're like, you're like, the zoom is important. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I was like, I know how to zoom. Don't worry. And so I like went out there and I had it like super zoomed in and I was trying to film through the fence. So I couldn't see the camera. So I can see like the screen or like look through or anything. So I was just like, hope I got it. And that's extra hard too, when you're trying to film through the chain link, because you'll, you'll be in the little hole. And then the second you move, the camera focuses on the fence rather mm -hmm. than the cars. And yeah. yeah. I got plenty of practice at Thunderhill skate pad with the chain link. Get in there. You just I stick my little hands through the holes and then. Yeah. That's what I was doing. <laughs> I had them through and I was trying to like, but cause it goes like 180 degrees. It's yeah. Hard. Whatever, dude. Yeah, it's hard, especially film when, yourself next when time you're coming down. <laughs> film your own damn shit. <laughs> yeah, when they're coming down hot, too, because you're like zoomed in and then they get close and you got to go out and yeah. then back in. Yeah. It's a whole fucking thing. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy to think about those days and how it was like, you know, me and Don Cotto or Edwin Cotto filming, like just the yeah. few people that were there watching. There was no spectators like. Definitely no fucking girls. That's for damn sure. Really? And there was, I think um, Alicia, Luis Maya's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. She was like probably one of the only girls I would see around in the very beginning. Wasn't she like an umbrella girl? I think so. Okay. That's something I've never wanted to do. Like, I'm just, the thought of like having creeps come up and like, try to fondle you and take pictures with you and like oh it's just never been for me no fucking thanks i think yeah i think uh i think going to like races with my dad and watching him be all creepy with those <laughs> girls like made me like so uncomfortable that i'm just like i like i don't yeah yeah i've just never probably been shouldn't say it. that but you know what dude what sorry, are you gonna do? sorry dad <laughs> you're a fucking creep ass <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd much rather learn how to drive and be a sick driver and have guys think I'm cool for that than wearing my underwear at an event and letting creeps grope me for pictures. Mm, mm. <laughs> I think guys already think you're cool. Yeah, and I don't really care either way. But... I know, you just, you're like, you, yeah, you, that's, that's one thing, that's one thing. I, so I was talking to Sally 
Oh, and, like, Sally. I love her. She was talking about how, you know, because, like, she does the social media thing because it's, like, it's, she has to. It's a job for like, her, as, for sure. As a woman in racing, she's already, like, at a disadvantage, like, yeah, like, uh, not skill wise, but like perception wise, right? So like she needs that to then sell herself to get like sponsorships and all that stuff. And like I just saw this crazy message that this guy like wrote her about like how come your hands aren't dirty and all this stuff. And I'm like, you always wear gloves, like what? And your engine. She's like, dude, I I steam cleaned my engine bay, so my hands don't. Do you get not dirty. fucking see her social media where she's constantly working yeah, and, and cleaning her garage and making and like, like people are commenting like, you know, hey, uh, you know, like I'd like to see the you know who's the guy's dirty hands who's behind all this. It's like why? And then if it's not that, it's some creep telling her how beautiful she is. Like yeah. I always see some fucking idiot that has to be like, you're so beautiful, like. Guys, you don't have to say that. Like, <laughs> you don't have to comment anything about the way she looks. Like, she doesn't care for one. Yeah. She has a man. She's not interested in you. And it doesn't get you anywhere. Like, I, well, I compliment saw... my fucking driving. Like, yeah. I don't care yeah. if you think I'm pretty. Like, yeah. that doesn't matter. And I'm sure Sally doesn't care either. <laughs> yeah, no, she just, want, she just wants to win. She just wants to fucking drive. And she should because she's amazing. She's and I guarantee level. she can drive better than any of those fucking creeps on her page commenting <laughs> this, that, or the other. She could probably <laughs> wrench and yeah, drive better than all of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I remember seeing Sally's Instagram for the first time. And I just loved the fact that, like... She wasn't in a modeling outfit. She wasn't half naked on her car. And that's fine if you want to be, but like she's a fucking badass because she's a hardcore lady who drives her car fucking hard. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And she's beautiful on top of it, you know? <laughs> like yeah. I love that. And I I wish that more young girls would realize that they don't have to do all that. They can just drive. They can have a cool car, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, I don't really know what the like where that comes from or like but I guess it's like, it's kind of like the norm a little bit. I, yeah. For younger generations, I'm sure, it, you know, imagine social media being such a huge part of your life, your whole life. Yeah. I mean, for us, it was something that we adapted to that came a little bit later, whatever, you know, we could live without it if we, I mean, some of us could, I don't know if you could, but <laughs> these are younger you, are you kids. Calling an attention whore? <laughs> no, I just Who mean a me? social media addict. <laughs> I'm definitely an addict. I have to I have to delete Instagram like yeah. during the week. Yeah. I've been off of it for a couple of months. I just got back on after Grange. How was you it? Know, when you get drifting shit, you want to get back on there. But Oh yeah, this week I was I was I was a bad boy. Yeah. I was on I was on Instagram a whole lot. But it's like they you know, you're getting sent pictures and well, yeah, that's, that's the only like, way I don't have Facebook, so that's the only way people can send me anything. And, and what you're posting is cool shit. It's not like you're just posting selfies. Yeah. With your headphones on like hey, shooting the cast <laughs> <laughs> shooting my palm cast over here <laughs> that's that's what i do later when i'm by myself yeah that's your other account <laughs> yeah. that's my only fans <laughs> no but yeah back to that i feel like it's it is so in the norm for you know girls to be half naked on social media with no car just you know yeah, for true. fun and then to you know, throw the car scene in there on top of it and to get that extra attention, I'm sure is addicting also. For sure. But I don't know. What I've learned all my many, many years is you get more respect just doing you and driving your car. That's, yeah. <laughs> and some might say I get respect because I'm Julian's girlfriend, but no, I get respect because I don't fucking accept anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Phoebe, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe demands respect. <laughs> I come off very gruff at times, and my resting bitch face doesn't help. But I'd say eighty percent of the time, I'm just kidding and giving people a hard time. Yeah, but you know, I have hurt a few feelings here and there. Most of the time, you're like pretty dead on, though. <laughs> Whether it's nice or not. Yeah. <laughs> like. Like Australia, I loved Australia. We could talk shit. Like they all talk shit to each other. The you know, the closer you are, the more shit you talk. And yeah. like I just fit right in to where New Zealand, like everybody's so sweet and so nice there. Like I was like, I'm just gonna stay quiet, I think, most of the time, or I'm probably gonna offend someone. <laughs> they were Yeah. I didn't get to go on the Australia trip, so I can't really compare, but I can see that based on people that I've yeah. met from 
from Australia. Well, yeah, and that's what they were telling me. Like, we talk shit to each other. Like, that's how we, we say hello, goodbye. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's good. It was good fun. And, yeah, I don't have to wash my mouth, my foul language. <laughs> yeah. What are, the, what are those, like, competitions where they, like, a debutante? I can, oh. I can't. I can never imagine you in, like, a debutante <laughs> no. competition. I'll just say that. No, definitely not. Well, the the parents would run out of there screaming oh my God. with their kids' ears covered. <laughs> Crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so you've been you've been on you've gone on all the international trips. I've been on all of them. Julian's been to Japan without me, but all of the big ones I've been on, which is so amazing. And I felt so blessed to get to be part of something so cool and to meet so many amazing people. Drifting has brought so many amazing friends from all over the world that, you know, we would have never met otherwise. Which yeah. Is I think my favorite part. The drift fam. Yeah. Know, that we've yeah, created. It's, it's pretty cool to like think like, oh yeah, oh hey, I have a friend in this country that like oh, I've actually sure. like spent time with, yeah. you know, and like there there is something to be said about spending time in the shop, like or, you know, like just talking to somebody quickly at an event versus all right, you and I are going to like finish this part of this person's car so that they can go drive. Like there's definitely a different level of like bond, I guess, created there. For sure. And just like the mini adventures within the adventure, like you and I going and getting tattooed in Osaka, like the the morning, you know, after whatever we did that night. Julian's sick dying in the hotel or the Airbnb. He probably had COVID back then. (laughs) So gnarly. Yeah, that was like that was like what like a few months before the COVID. Thing no, because New Zealand was COVID. Oh yeah, so it was way. Before. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, years before. He just got sick. Yeah, we got sick. I got sick too, but I got better before him. Thank God. He gets that hit. Was rough. He gets hard with sick. Yeah. Stuff. Or he's just a little weenie. He he falls hard. The big <laughs> ones fall hard, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's also a weenie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was rough. He was, cause that was like, that was, was that, that was super deep, right? Yes. Yeah. Cause I remember yep. he was like, he was, he was balled up on the floor of Bayon in like one of the like car stalls, just like in the fetal position. Yeah. And we were on the, what's the one, this little skid pad part that they have. Uh, remember when we took the cars out the first day and they were like practicing. I think this is. D-course? It was so funny because know. we had to wear masks because we were sick and yeah. that was so foreign to me and I felt so embarrassed to have to wear a mask. Like yeah. it just felt so weird to me. I'd never have to, I never had yeah. to do that before. And like they have a video of us in the car and we both have our masks on and we're stuffy and so sick. I was thinking about that the other day. Like if I would have only known how common these masks were about to be. Like, yeah. <laughs> now I kind of like it. I like hiding behind the mask. I don't know what it is. I feel like I can be extra high too. And even though my <laughs> eyes are still showing, <laughs> no one could tell I'm high for some reason. Yeah, because it's hiding your like silly grin. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But yeah, so many good adventures, so many good memories. And even if all of this ended tomorrow and we went back to having normal people lives, it would be amazing and all well worth it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just the, like, I think realizing that everything does come to an end has like motivated me to be more involved. Like, yeah. For while sure. things are good, you know, or while things are happening. Cause like, you know, you get older, like shit, I might die tomorrow. You <laughs> or know? you're going to have like a kid. Yeah. And that's going to fucking end it. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to go to private school. <laughs> He's like, never getting in one of those skin no! cars. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having a kid. Like, I'd be, I'd have one of those baby holder things, have it all tied to me out in the yeah. shop, like yeah. helping Julian in fucking the clean room, the yeah. shop. <laughs> yeah. like Strapped car, to my car, back. Car seat in the bucket. A little, um, like a Sparco car seat. Yeah. No thanks. No. I'd rather have a puppy. Yeah. Well, you should get one. How's that going for you? <laughs> um, he just got his first grooming. Oh, a little haircut? Yeah. Oh. Fly young stud. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got his balls chopped off yet, so he was flaunting it at the dog park today. Oh, man. I'm so sad. 
I know you like have to do it, but like as a man, you're just like, you you gonna do what? Yeah. He'll be okay though. You yeah. could get him those um like little fake testicles. Do they do that? Yeah. I'll pay extra little for that. Little fake ones. I'll pay extra for that. <laughs> well, because we got him all groomed and Shomi literally cannot stop looking at his nuts. His little they're fuzzy huge. nuts. <laughs> they're, no, he the guy shaved them. He like he like he like pup scaped them, dude. <laughs> A little butt cut. <laughs> yeah, he got the he got the sack too. No. Yeah. Could you imagine being a dog groomer and you're like, all right, sit still, buddy. He got a buddy. Animal. He's like, what's happening? Unhand <laughs> <laughs> <Hand> me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the man looks good. like you know it does it does wonders. A little, little trim, a little so much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get a girl dog because I don't like boy dogs and their wieners and that whole situation. It's yeah. just not for me. Mm, I get it. Yeah. Wait, girl power. I have enough boys in my life. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> my life is driving and boys pretty much. Mm. But that's okay. Most girls don't like me anyway, so I don't really have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. No, it's it's gotten better as I've gotten older but that's true okay. for sure was not a big girl fan or fan of girls when i was younger that's probably why julian was my best friend in high school yeah and i didn't have i had girlfriends too but i've just always gotten along better with the guys could probably be a little bit more aggressive be my normal self not yeah. hurt as many feelings Talk shit. <laughs> yeah i I, that's weird yeah like i've i uh i definitely have like a lot of female friends i guess which is not as common but whatever i'm weird yeah we're all weird a friend is a friend yeah yeah i mean i made i made i made quite a few friends through this like drifting adventure and it's insane and like how lucky have we been to meet such quality people too yeah. you know like it's i feel like it's so rare to meet quality people especially these days and for us to just continuously meet legit good people is like so good but tell me why all of the amazing people have to live so fucking far away yeah like yeah. aaron every time i see aaron i just love being around him he's so positive he's so sweet he's like lifts everybody up and then he has to go home and it's like yeah. <laughs> and then we don't see him for months and months yeah and he's not even as far as like Billy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Oh, William. <laughs> William, William Sutton the third. That's his name's just Billy, though, I'm pretty sure. Is it? Actually... I call him Billiam. Mm. Billiam? Billy, yeah. <laughs> Billy. So, like, I guess over in like Europe, Billy's like a totally, like, there's not like a lot of people named Billy who are like above. Like, usually you go to, like, Bill or yeah. William in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But, like, I guess in Europe, you just stay Billy forever. You're just a Billy. I feel like Billy here is kind of like Hillbilly, like rednecky. Billy. Uh, actually. Hey, Billy. Actually, that's accurate. My friend's dad's <laughs> name is Billy, and he dresses like, who's the guy from Rock of Love? Brett, Brett Michaels. Yeah, he dresses like Brett Michaels. <laughs> the bandana. He dresses like Brett Michaels. Like, <laughs> he, came, he came to my friend's. <laughs> <laughs> he came to my friend's uh graduation party his, i think it was high school graduation in full and he had like a leather cowboy hat with the bandana <laughs> and he had like a leather vest no shirt and yes. leather pants was he on a harley or just no oh he drove there <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like the leather <laughs> that's so funny yeah i know a couple of country ass billies also yeah, I guess it's a thing. Not our Billy. He's fancy Ferrari guy. Yeah, he's a fancy Ferrari guy. He's a race engineer. And we know a lot of fancy people. Yeah, why aren't we fancy? <laughs> We're fancy in our own ways. Yeah. Look at all this fancy Palmcast shit you got. Yeah. I'll take a picture of this silly arrangement <laughs> and put it up somewhere. I don't know. I just want to I want to do it more like I I'm really like I'm happy to do, you're obviously doing the first one in person with all my stuff. I and feel so special. We'll see how it comes out. <laughs> but It's like the least views out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See how many people I've offended or eh. upset. I feel like the, I feel like 
I do, I will admit like the car community is like a little sexist in a way. Like if, if you'd like, like I had Sally on, right. And she's got, she has like a big following, yeah. but like the episode did pretty well, but like in relationship to like somebody with like a lesser following, I think like, I would say it, I don't know. I think it's like I said earlier, like it, when you get on here with another guy and you're talking about drifting, it's just like a conversation you would overhear at the racetrack in the pits. Right. So like, it's easier for guys to tune in and listen to a conversation that they would have with another dude and stuff that they would talk about to where, you know, I can talk about that stuff too, but I can only hold a conversation for so long with that shit. And then I, I run out of stuff to say, but yeah, I can see that. I don't know. I guess people like backstories and, you have a lot of those. <laughs> you, you, you know Boy, all. do I. <laughs> you know what story I was thinking of yesterday? Hmm. When we were in Japan and we were walking in Osaka and that man was on his phone and he ran into you and oh. he dropped his phone and the screen shattered and yeah. then he blamed you. Yeah. And then he Probably said, because he's not used to like, you know, giant men walking on the streets of Osaka that are the size of walls. Yeah. And and then it things, was things escalated was, and <laughs> yeah, Phoebe had to like run me off. First of all, we were going back to the Airbnb after a full night of drinking. Yeah. Like it was, it was 6am. Yeah. Very early in the morning. I was not drunk like you guys were, but you boys were toast. And yeah, there's, was, a, there's a picture of me at the wrong, at the wrong place at Zendoya where like, I can't even open my eyes. <laughs> like, I don't even know how I ate. <laughs> Thank God you ate. But yeah, this guy was like adamant that you knocked his phone out of his hands. And we all saw him run into you and drop his phone because he wasn't paying attention because he was on his phone. He was trash too. Yeah. And he, what was he yelling at you? He was saying he was like in the game. He was saying he was part of Yakuza. (laughs) He kept yelling Yakuza. And and then Drunk Palmer was like, you don't know where I'm from? And I was like, oh God, we got to go. We got to go. And I just, Uh, I was like, come on, Palmer. And then I'm I'm trying to drag Palmer down the street because it, there was no chance. If the police came and yeah. this local man is telling the police that these six Americans, you know, this guy ran phone. into him. And, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. we wouldn't have stood a chance. So I was like, we got to go now. Yeah, we, we disappeared. <laughs> we disappeared. I remember quick. like, because I, I was like kind of drunk. And I, was like, I was like all pissed. Yeah, you were really angry. And I mean, rightfully so, because you didn't do anything wrong. And the guy like started following us. Yeah. And then Julian was like trying to reason with him. And yeah. I was trying to distract you. And burst burst feed Mike was like <laughs> yeah. talking to him. And then apparently like <laughs> he was super drunk and he was like showing. He's like, oh, this is my car. It's this is my Ferrari. And he showed uh, Mike a Lamborghini. And Mike's <laughs> like, <"That's." laughs> He'd be like, oh, OK, obviously this guy's full shit. Oh, man. Good times. We were, that was the night that we went like bowling and Julian tried to juggle the bowling balls. Oh my balls. God. Yeah. And then. I don't know how we didn't get kicked out of that bowling alley. We were obnoxious. Well, you guys were obnoxious in there. And then that bar with the pool tables. Where oh, there yeah. was like that OG guy playing. And then every time someone lost, he'd make them pull their pants down and do a lap around the table and just their underwear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We started doing that also. And I didn't think Julian would make me. Like go in my underwear if I lost and I am the worst pool player ever. And I had been drinking and I was in a dress and I lost and I was like, no, you're not going to make me. And he was like, yeah, you got to follow the rules. And I was like, no. And he was like, yep. And I had to pull my dress up, show my ass and run around the table. The Japanese guys. It was like, it was like the music was like, and everything went silent. (laughs) The Japanese dudes were very into that. Oh my God, it was so bad. They were very happy. (sighs) Good times. Yeah. That was a good night. And then I looked at them all and I was like, you don't know where I'm from? (laughs) And then I pulled my dress down. (laughs) Uh, That was that night that we met the like skating dude who was like. I'm still friends with him. Me too. Yeah. And he grows weed in the hills. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like very illegal. And we're like sick. And Phoebe showed him, Phoebe showed him like a picture of her in front of like this huge grow. (laughs) And he was just like. Oh, like the, I've never seen anyone get more excited about anything in my life. We were trying to get him to come to Super D. Yeah. We're like, you should come, man. I was so stoked to like randomly meet someone who is a huge stoner 
in Osaka, which yeah. is not common. Yeah. Very sketchy to be a weed smoker. And, and then even more so to grow it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and his plants were pretty impressive for like the situation he was in and where he had them. Like good enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then he like, didn't he just like after that, then throw down on the like stairs that, uh, Josh like rolled his ankle off. Yeah, yeah, they're crazy. He posts videos all the time of them just shredding in Osaka yeah. all throughout. Yeah. It's it's always cool meeting people like that on these trips that like aren't necessarily part of the adventure, but then like Yeah. Or like they're not huge drift fans. Like yeah. we're there for drifting and we assume everybody knows what drifting is and they're yeah, like, they're oh, like oh, what's that? Mm. Or they're like, oh no. Yeah, oh you're a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of funny because, like, yeah, Japan drifting is very... It feels like a lot of it is... Uh, I don't know. Like, the guys that got into it a long time ago who are still doing it in D1, like, it was, like, a criminal activity. Yeah. And so... Yeah, we remember we had a hard time getting Naoki here because he'd been in trouble for street drifting. But, I didn't know that. Yeah, he had been in trouble for street drifting, and they don't have, like... I guess a charge for that. Yeah. So he was charged with like a gang leader. I could, I'm not a hundred percent, but he was charged with some kind of like gang leader affiliation type thing. Whoa. So when we tried to get his visa to come here, they like almost didn't let him come. That's crazy. Oh God. Well, everything. We'll, just we'll see falls. how we'll see how long this. Talking yeah. about how fancy everything is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stupid setup. When it falls, it's over. I got the. I got the. <laughs> I should have got the thirteen. I should have got the seventeen dollar mic arms instead of the thirteen dollar mic arms. Next time, what are you gonna do? Make sure you leave your review. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very important episode <laughs> on my podcast, and these fell off the table ten times. Took my guest out. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting sued. It's a whole thing. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. That's that's crazy. So he. And like how, yeah, how weird is it? Like, okay, so you've known that like Julian has been like obsessed with Burst and like Naoki forever. Like how weird is it to be with him at like End Style? It's and so crazy. And it's just like, I'm so proud. I'm proud of all of you guys, but it's just, it makes me so proud to hear that there are OGs in Japan watching the Animal Style videos and they're fans of Animal Style. Like that's that's crazy. Like, is this the top? Like the, yeah. you know, what else is there yeah. after that? Like yeah. Julian tried the FD thing. It wasn't for him. His heart wasn't in it. He wasn't enjoying it. And he decided, fuck this. I'm just going to start driving for fun. I'm going to build my car to look sick and I'm going to drive it really hard. And I'm, I'm just going to do that. And I feel like that's when animal style really just fucking blossomed and yeah. you guys took off. And like, again, how fucking cool is that, that, you don't compete. You don't really care about winning. Like you don't go to places to try to win and be the best. Like you just go have fun, help your friends, your friends help you. Like everybody wants everybody to have a good time. And yeah, like that's, yeah. that's it. It's it goes, it so goes back cool. to what you're saying about if you do something just out of the pure love of doing it, it's going to come back and people yeah. are going to, that's how you gain respect. Right, like not Not gain respect, but that's how you like. I don't know it. If you're doing something and you're just doing it to to gain respect and not actually like for the the thing that you're hoping to do, I'm saying it weird, but yeah, and it's also not just doing it for the likes or the clout, you know, like yeah, and also maintaining who you are and your character when you kind of blow up, you know, like. Julian has a pretty good following. He has fans, people who want his autograph and pictures with him, which just melts my heart. I think that's so amazing. And he hasn't changed, you know, like he's still the same person. He's still a nice guy. He'll always try to stop and talk to someone if they come up to him, you know, like he could be so busy in the pits, car falling apart, having the worst day and still treat someone who comes up with respect and give them the time and the picture or whatever it is that they want. And that's so cool. It's also really amazing being out and about and I'll, you know, I'll tell someone, oh yeah, I'm into drifting or I drift or whatever it may be. And I'll be like, oh, my boyfriend um, 
drifts or whatever. Like I've had a guy be like, well, who's your boyfriend? (laughs) Julian Jacobs. And he was like, what? (laughs) No fucking way. And I'm like, yep, that's my boyfriend. And he's like, holy shit, that's so cool. And like that stuff just makes me like so happy. It's just so cool to see that there's people that adore him and look up to him. And I don't know. It's. Yeah, I got my my favorite restaurant right now is this place called like Mazara. And I don't know how to say it. I'm fucking butcher <laughs> every language, but it's I was ordering and I had like my animal style sweatshirt on. And I think I was like, oh, animal style. Cool. Like, are you into drifting? And I was like, yeah, I'm actually on animal style. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, he gave me he gave me like half off my food. Uh... And I was like. This is like this is like a month or two ago, and I was like, I think I fucking made it, dude. Like, y'all, do you want an autograph? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, calm down. <laughs> no, but that was that was pretty cool. I mean, like, it's like it, it is kind of you, you have to take a step back and like appreciate what what that ride has been for and sure. I've definitely been riding coattails since the beginning, but you know, no, you've come so far. We Last all, weekend was fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And we all have. I mean, there's like people and just like what we're doing and kind of realize, like, I don't know, I'm doing this. I was, I did this out of boredom, but people seem to enjoy it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. And like, I don't know, it's whatever happens, happens. Yeah. But uh, like, driving is still the number one priority. Like, I, I, I will definitely like prioritize like finishing my car and going driving before I put out a podcast episode. So we'll see what that means. Yeah, it's like the fans were asking, like, I know you're a busy guy, but when's the next podcast? <laughs> it it like, was crazy. Like, it, at, uh, <laughs> the response that I got at, at Final Bout was like, I think I had like 10 people come up to me and tell me that they love the podcast. That's like, so cool. I was like driving out to go on a run and someone like came up and like stopped me and stuff. And I was like, this is sick. That's I, really cool. Because I like, the numbers aren't crazy and I don't really, like to me, it seems like not that many people listen to it, but I guess... I guess it gets out there. People like say, well, yeah. And if, even if it's only five people that really enjoy it, that's perfect. Yeah. You know, like, and like you said, people, <clears throat> they like to hear the backstories and they like to hear the inside scoop on, you know, how we live our lives. And even like the videos, the cheesy videos where you're narrating, we're, you know, around here making jokes and whatever. Like, we think it's completely stupid, but other people are like, that's so cool, you know, or that's, that's where they live, or this is how they do things. You know like, what's- you know what's funny is me walking around with the camera and like BSing and then Julian putting in the animal style videos like Mm -hmm. really gave me uh the confidence to do this yeah because like before I was just like like I'm corny and I can like be funny with my friends and stuff but I like never thought that like other people would enjoy it so like when I when I like people would send me like little clips be like haha you know yeah (laughs) dude this is funny I'm like oh shit like I like I can make it like because that's I I've all like growing up i always want to do like kind of like we've talked about yeah this, i was like, gonna say when you were talking about wanting to get into stand-up and like practicing on the camcorder was kind of perfect because you're not in front of the camera but you're still yeah. on the camera and yeah. you can be your cheesy self and people enjoy it yeah and it's like i can't really go do stand-up for drift people <laughs> like, <laughs> but i can do this you know or go do stand-up about drifting to people who don't know anything yeah. about drifting like what about these tire shortages, guys? <laughs> like, oh my god! Everyone in the audience, like, what? <laughs> Crickets. Oh god, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, I always enjoy when you're on the camera. Like, for me, the second the camera comes out, I'm so uncomfortable. Like, just immediately awkward. Like. Even the other day, Julian was like, God, you get so awkward when the camera comes on. And he's like the fucking king of awkward. So for him to tell me I'm awkward, like it had to have been real bad. I feel like I feel like you guys both think you're more awkward than you are. But but yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, we're like, not we're not camera people either. Like we don't like taking pictures. We cannot take a good picture to save our lives. Oh. Like when we got married, I had to have Al's girlfriend, Michelle, take like 50 pictures every time we took a photo because I knew yeah. my eyes would be open, his eyes would be closed. Well, you guys, to... yeah, we went out. Was it your anniversary? <laughs> it's, and it's I tried his to, birthday. Oh, it was his birthday. I tried to take a bunch of pictures. I took like seven and like, <laughs> like, my... we just took turns. <laughs> took, yeah, it's like eyes closed, eyes closed, <laughs> eyes closed, one eye closed. I'm like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, we're both just awkward people. Yeah, and I, 
it doesn't like come across i think like a lot of people don't understand that i guess <laughs> like um i don't know like when you're in an event like people want to come up and like talk and stuff what one thing that i realized is at like final bout they haven't been people at, they haven't been spectators at events for yeah. like the last year and a half and i was talking about this with like a couple of the guys and like they didn't necessarily have the same experience but i'm i very much want to talk to everybody and like make sure everyone's having a good time and like chat it up chat it up and i realized i was like drained by the end of the <laughs> event because i was going out and driving and then i was like coming back yeah. and like oh my roan's here like i gotta, I want to talk to him and he wants to find benson and i'm like kind of like talking then my other friend came and like i love that they did right but it was just and then this person wants to talk to me about xyz and it's like I I think it's very challenge like I think it's really challenging to do both and I can understand why um like I don't know it it made it made the next night when it was just like no spectators just no us, media yeah. just like I think it was like 10 cars maybe at Apple Valley such a chill event yeah and it was like a night event no one was there I was like okay I I needed this <clears throat> because like it's not that i don't like talking to people it's just it is like it's draining it is after we get home from a drift adventure all i want to do is just like sit in my room by myself and just like decompress and like not interact not that like i don't enjoy like you said i enjoy seeing everybody but it is it's very draining and then on top of the physical yeah. aspects of it and you're you know, not eating the best and the heat like so down there sleeping. last weekend yeah, yeah no sleep heat uncomfortable from riding in the truck like yeah it's a lot. I don't know how much longer our old asses will be able to do this. <laughs> Hopefully we, gotta, we can like, get real baller and just like fly places and have yeah. the cars towed. Remember that one time when we did that for final bout? It felt like such ballers to have the cars towed in and we flew. I Unlike the time we drove. I, went, I just went to hang out. <laughs> oh. But. Well, maybe someday you'll be cool like yeah, this. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> one day, one day I'll ball. The first final bout. Me, Julian, and Ryan drove Ryan's Maxima. Oh, yeah. 38 hours to Wisconsin. And you guys and didn't stop. Like, you just. We didn't stop. We just rotated drivers the whole time. And got gas. We got pulled over in Wyoming for speeding <laughs> in like wet weather or something. I think they just pulled us over because the California plates. But yeah. Um, we, well, had, like, probably, we had like, they probably the, have narcotics. In we that had the vehicle. tiniest amount of weed stashed, like, <laughs> oh, so like smugglers. Holding. Yeah. Like straight mules, like stuffed in the body <laughs> panels of the trunk or something. Like, cause I knew that some of those States you go to jail Yeah. and we get pulled over of course. And it was like a trooper and he comes up and he, he starts questioning Ryan and he's like, what, what are you guys doing here? And he's like, oh, we're on our way to a drift event. And he's like, a what? And he's like a drift event, you know, like motorsports like racing and he was like oh like tokyo drift yeah 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 and ryan's like yep that's it and he's like all right hold on one second and then a second trooper had pulled up and he goes back and we can see him in the i can see him in the rear view mirror and ryan's watching him in the side he's mirror probably... and they're like talking and he's like yeah and the other one's like no way and, he's like, yeah. and then the other one comes up by himself and he's like what are you guys here for and ryan was like we're going to a drift event and the guy was like like Tokyo Drift <laughs> and Ryan was like yeah and he's like hmm and they didn't believe us and like we for sure watched them like no fucking way drifting no uh -uh. <laughs> like they didn't believe our story at all they thought for sure we were smuggling drugs or something but yeah. like yeah they questioned us and let us go and then we just went on our way and <laughs> drove the rest of the 38 hours we had or whatever it was Wyoming is the longest state to get through like it's, yeah. just, it's just so much of Wyoming just all looks the same so fucking long i did i did <clears throat> i did have a friend that got pulled over in uh i think it was like tennessee and he, they were on their way to like like a music festival and they had like the music mm -hmm. festival written on the back window in like a volkswagen bus oh yeah your california, california plates, plates are enough like that's dude. all you need you don't need a uh, stickers or paint window paint <laughs> He was like, he's from like a pretty like well off family too. And so like they like they got him out, but like he they they took his van and put him in jail and was like, I think he had like 
like two grams of weed or something. This is this is a while ago. This I told like, Julian and Ryan, if we go down for this, I'll go to jail because you guys have legit jobs and I have a shitty job. So I'll see, be the one is, to go down. This is this is like, <laughs> like the ride or die shit that people don't see. I just figured like, you know, Julian makes more money in our life, so he needs to keep his job. And I could survive a Wyoming jail. He ended up working be in, the, fine. in the cannabis industry anyway. So Yeah, and you know, like I, I grew up pretty country, so I could just pull my hillbilly side out. Yeah. Stout. I could be a pod boss. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fine. Know. I'm gonna stay here. I don't even know what that is. A pod boss? Yeah. You never watch like Lock Up Raw or no. into the prison shows? No. What? A pod boss is like the one who's in charge. Like they you, make you they, would probably oh, end up pod boss. I then. would have to, or else I'd be probably beat up in somebody's bitch. <laughs> I'd have to become a pod boss real quick. Yeah, they they call the shots and they like you know do all the deals down low. Yeah. And, you know, trade contraband. Shit. Yeah, I could shanks. See, I could see you doing that. Yeah, I mean, I never want to go, but that's the plan if I do. <laughs> if you ever do, that's that's it. Yeah. Catch me on 60 Days In. Mm. Never seen that either. Mm -mm. <sighs> I don't watch like jail TV because it's like... It was, Takes like, you back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going back. <laughs> I don't know. It's like one of those things like maybe I should just... Yeah, I guess I watch it because it's so interesting because I've never been and I don't plan to be so it's not like yeah stressful. for me it was like uh, like i don't i don't know i feel like there was like a point in which it could have been a possibility i avoided it for so long i don't yeah. want to watch it on tv yeah i was like <laughs> i don't really like want to know what it's like in there because maybe i maybe i'll be like oh maybe i should have like you know <laughs> <laughs> they seem like they have some good snacks <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't know oh, i don't man. watch i don't watch a lot of tv <clears throat> yeah me either just prison shows <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I, if any of us ever get uh, in a, a few felonies, we'll definitely get the rundown from you of what we need to do. Yeah. You like get in there, you're like, all right, so a friend had told me, <laughs> am I supposed to beat him up or beat him up? <laughs> what team am I on? I don't know. I think you have to go with your race. Do you? That's, That's the rule. rules. Mm. What if I go in there with like an ancestry test? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I know they want to see your papers, but I don't know about those papers. <laughs> <laughs> what did, was I just listening to where they were talking about, like, they want to see it? Anyway, I think there was, like, I was just listening to a podcast where the guy was, like, talking about how he went in. He's like, well, I want to watch TV in here. And they're like, nope, get out. And they're like, go be with your kind or something. And then he, like, tried to go with, like, the Aryan Brotherhood or whatever. And, like, they're like, let me see your papers or some shit. And they were, he's like... I mean, oh, I, how do I do that? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> how do I get my here. papers? What are those? Like, <laughs> Man, no thanks. Sounds like an awful place. Yeah, I'm good. We'll just probably try and stay out of trouble. Yeah. Did you watch Orange is the New Black? No. Okay. Well, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I watched... What did I watch? Yeah, I didn't watch that. That's like the like Lady Prison show. Lady Prison, yeah. Yeah, where they like sell their dirty prison underwear and smuggle them out and sell them so they like make money dirty prison panties that's a thing <laughs> it's a thing okay <laughs> who's buying those oh god imagine how gross those are yeah i think that's the point though the grosser the better is that what the... that's what i've learned <laughs> how how <laughs> Have you been researching? Uh... I thought it'd be a good idea. And then um, I, I went on the site where you do such business. Yeah. And what's the site called? There's quite a few. There's more than one. There's more than one for sure. Um, this site, what was it called? Panty deals or something. <laughs> Pan panty deals. But these girls are no joke. And Use code like, good as for 20% off. Yeah, they, they're doing some wild shit for very cheap. I was like, how is anyone supposed to make any fucking money? Like, and a lot of the terms I had to Google because I was like, what does this even mean? If you don't know what they if are, I don't I'm know. fucking scared. Yeah, I'm like as vulgar as it gets. And I was like, what does stuffing mean? And oh, then I no. Googled it. And what is that? It's where they take the whole pair of panties uh -huh. and stuff them up uh -huh. in. What's the point? Could and they then, do that with anything? Why do they have to be panties at that point? 
Well, I guess wearing them just isn't enough. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, but like, can you do that with like a sponge or like, <laughs> like, why does it have to be? I'm sure they would do it with anything. You paid them $5 to. Is that like, all they charge? It was so cheap. Like, it, is that all they charge? Yeah. Like how is anyone supposed to make money if like you're selling your dirty panties for two bucks? Like what's the point? The shipping costs more than that. Yeah. So it just seemed like a lot of work for me. And I. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you looked up, checked out the avenue. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I was trying to find a side hustle, but too much hustle it took. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't interested. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. And you got to like deal with the people. And you have to deal with the men that want to buy the panties. And like. I can't imagine. Mm, yeah. The quality of man that's trying to buy panties is pretty sketchy. Also. Yeah. Or like. Maybe they're like. You know. I mean I'm sure there's some normal there's dudes some that just want some dirty stinky like... panties. But the dudes I saw on there were pretty fucking creepy. Good. And like a lot of. um like the only messages I got were people asking me to poop on camera, face included. Oh, that was like important. Face include must show face. So You're like, I just want to sell some. I, I really wanted to like record a dog taking a shit or something. You know, also something where are these gross. girls getting these underwear so cheap that they can turn them around? I know for two bucks? that's what I'm saying. Like, like, none of it makes sense. And like, th what they don't realize is like, you're supposed to be in charge girls. Like they, you make the prices. They're yeah. going to buy them. Like yeah. there's just no business ethic, you know, <laughs> like they're just, it's really <laughs> wild. Undercutting each other. Yeah. It's, it's a wild like, west out there. 10 for four bucks. You're like, no, yeah, no, no, it, that didn't end up working out. So. I'll That's really weird. They're like, they're like, oh, you want to sell used panties? Do you want to shit on camera? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. That's like going in for a job interview for like, what? Well, that's, that's a good example. It's like going in for a job interview, like work at a movie theater, and they're like, they're like, oh yeah, like yeah, I've done this before. Yeah, I can like fill up popcorn, and they're like, do you want to fuck on camera? And you're like, and play it in the theater. You're like, do you want to be on the screen? Yeah. <laughs> With your dick in the popcorn? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and I, I'm no shame in anybody's game. If they want $2 vagina underwear, you know, more power to you. Yeah. But. Yeah, stock up. I don't need your $2. Yeah, that's not worth it. <laughs> no, definitely not. I think there's no market for, like, dude's underwear because they don't have, like, holes in them. And <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> But those would be the ones the dudes wouldn't want to part with. Like, oh, yeah. these are my favorites. It's my, good ventilation. My one of my one of my close friends was telling me that she one of her good friends like just started OnlyFans, but for her feet only. I yeah, like, I hear that's played out too. Yeah, and she's like, well, she's doing okay, and I was like, what's okay? Like, I want to know what these like numbers are. You know also, I mean? like, it's a lot of work, you know. Yeah. Like, you got to make the content, you have to fucking you, interact with these guys, and like, ugh, just it's yeah. so much, you know. Yeah. Plus, it, it probably always, like, starts out, like, yeah, I'm just selling pictures of my feet. And then, yeah. like, Nobody wants just... Ten minutes or, you know, two years later, you're pooping on camera with a face. <laughs> <laughs> Full face poops. You're like, how much to do this? <laughs> you're shipping your shit to the person. <laughs> I've heard about that, too. That's a thing? Yeah. Oh, my God. And I thought That's furries another were episode. weird. I thought furries were weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. I'd probably try doing the furry thing once. Yeah, it seems... I feel like it'd be weird, but I feel like it'd be... It'd be really claustrophobic for me, I feel like. Mm, really I... sweaty in there. Yeah, I watched the episode of Entourage where, like, the dude had to do, like... I think his name was Turtle or whatever, and, like, the girl wanted to hook up with him, but she's like, wear this, and, like, gave him, like, a big bag. And he, like, got it home and opened it up as a furry costume. And then he, like, didn't want to do it, but I was like, I probably would have done it. Have you ever seen those, like, what is that HBO show? I'm going to regret show? saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you should get a furry head to wear while you're drifting. Like, just the head. Like a panda <laughs> head or something. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'll just wear the little costume. Why not? Yeah, there's, like, full-on conventions and shit. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's no joke. Remember that, uh, remember that photography lady girl? That Matt Which Magic one? <laughs> I think Marcus Fry and Matt Madrigali both dated her. She she went to the like she went to like the pony cons. She was Whoa. like a she would always at drift events she would always wear like the pony like onesie when it was cold, and she would go to those. She hmm. was I think they call them bronies. I don't know. Anyway, that's like but it's like a My Little Pony convention. But you know, there's like it's all like adults. You're somebody's little pony, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they just play genuine on repeat. <laughs> 
at the oh hotel when you check in. Oh, why do they have, why, okay. Here's the dirty piece. Yeah, they always good. make it out. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to get weird at some point. You're going to have to like put a little like edit in to warn people. <laughs> this is where it gets graphic. I, I set all, like even if they're like very PG, I set like not for kids on like every podcast episode. Yeah. Because like I don't remember everything. Yeah. But this one's definitely getting that. <laughs> I am not for kids. No. And kids aren't for you? Not for me. Yeah. I don't mind kids. I mean, I prefer like well-behaved kids. Mm. Like not those annoying little shits that are like running rampant in the restaurant. Mm. I do love when little kids fall. It's like one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> when they're like, oh, yeah, they're, they're like, just like tumble. running or like, like one time we were at um, Six Flags yeah. in Vallejo and we were like waiting in line and there were these little kids just like running back and forth and one like kind of ran into me and I was like god you're such a little shit like, go away <laughs> and then he came running back and fell right in front of me and just like and I was like that's what you get and Julian was like babe and I was like well he's fucking running into people <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at I was at the laundromat like after your final battle, because you know everyone thinks we're balling, but like I still gotta go to the at the mat. laundry mat. <laughs> like I posted like post drift event, like reality <laughs> check or something, and this kid was like, you know the bat baskets that they push around mm -hmm. at the laundry mat, like the ones that you like put your wet clothes in that you ride dryer? in when you're a kid at the laundry mat. This kid was like, <laughs> he was like running on the place where you fold your laundry and like jumping into the cart and like riding the cart, Ooh. and he stacked like. And the mom's like, what are you doing? Like she like <laughs> screams at this kid and it's just like, I was like, yeah, back to the, back to reality. <laughs> like, jerk event. And there's like some like homeless dude like sleeping in there and you're just like, you're like, yep, yeah, this is. This is life. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I gotta look at, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. After we came home from Grange, I, you know, drove down there and back and Less than 48 hours. Yeah, and then, so most people don't know this, but you do a lot of the towing. I do a lot of the towing. Julian has such a bad back. He can only like sit upright for like maybe two hours and then he's just an excruciating pain and then it will mess up <clears throat> his driving. His back will be so fucked by the time he gets to actually drive. So I always end up driving for the most part. And then we drove home and then I had to be up at... 5.30 in the morning to get back in my van to drive two hours to Sacramento and then make, you know, 10 deliveries and then drive all the way back in traffic. And it was like, this is my reality. This is my life. Just yeah. driving. Yeah. Not even driving my own drift car, just towing my mans. Yeah, you can actually <laughs> tow really well, too. Like, I've had a few people tow <clears throat> for me and they were like, the forerunner is like a little... It's it's good, but it's like I had to save the forerunner once for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell for you. Yeah, yeah. Phoebe can, Phoebe knows what she's doing. She's had a lot of experience. <clears throat> Mostly like forced experience. Like the first time I towed, we were in a borrowed truck, borrowed trailer. I had no idea what I was doing. Didn't even know. <clears throat> excuse me, that you're supposed to go 55. Like I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. <laughs> so I was just going down five, like 75, just starting to get speed wobble and then yeah. slow back down and like had no fucking clue what I was doing. But yeah, Julian just couldn't drive anymore and he was falling asleep and like I couldn't sleep because I was afraid he was going to fall asleep and yeah. we were going to die. And then yeah. finally I was like, I'll just drive. And then I never stopped after that. <laughs> yeah, you saved me. Yeah, we, were, we were that like, because we drove from here to Washington straight. I think it was like 14 hours or something. It was a long one. Toodle. We left it. We left at 8 p.m. <clears throat> And drove overnight and got there, I think, at, like... Um, yeah, that was so long. I didn't, that was a rough one. We were delirious, for sure. Yeah. Like, even Dory was tired of being in the car. Yeah. Like, when we had to leave, I was like, come on, Dory, let's go. And she just, like, put her head back down. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we've definitely <clears throat> had, uh, we've had quite a few adventures at this point. For sure. Many good times. Yeah. And it's like, the good times always end up outweighing the bad you yeah. know, like tired, fucking car troubles, whatever it may be. Like yeah. when you think back, you don't think of the bad memories first. It's always like the good for the most part. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> Definitely for the most part. I mean, what, like, yeah, there's, 
I can't like it's like trying to think of like bad stuff that happened on all like not bad stuff but just like challenges like how how many times has it been like yeah and I don't know what it is but it seems like <clears throat> the best people have the worst luck like <laughs> especially like our animal style guys like I feel like everybody on the team is so sweet like Jason Luke you Al Julie like everybody's like really nice guys and just seem to have really shitty luck at times <laughs> I guess like, yeah, I was, I was talking to somebody about that too. And I think, I think like the bad times make the good times better. Like when you go make it to an event and like just did you, everything's good. Did you read that on Pinterest? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a closet. The bad I'm times a, make the good times better. I, um, I'm a closet Pinterest, <laughs> Pinterester. Is that what they're called? Pinterester, yeah. I'm a pinner. <laughs> I'd be pinning. <laughs> No, but that, yeah, it's true. And the good times, it makes it worth it, you know, like, yeah. or like think of the times like, you know, driving 38 hours to get to final bout and then the Longhorn Saloon, you know, like yeah. nights like that, yeah. or like, you yeah. know, parties at the lake house that we rented, like those memories are so good and so worth it. Yeah. It's not even just the event always. It's like, it's not about the hangs, not about the destination, not the journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also something about I didn't say that to Francesca because we were talking about like why or like how Jason Jason and Francesca have like a very different time schedule and frame and how they like to get to events and get home from events and I was like you know I said that same thing to Francesca and she laughed but she you know they're not they have their they have their approach yeah and it's nice that we can we're a team but everybody can take their own approaches and yeah. get there when they get there the yeah. way they get there and yeah it, it works we split know? up often <laughs> yeah for it's sure. like nice if we can caravan but like often we'll like split up sometimes we won't stay in the same place or whatever but like as long as we have that like meet up or hang out or whatever and it's, it's all hangs. good yeah, yeah for sure i'm kind of curious like what what's next like what comes of this definitely not any international adventures for a while I fucking know. covid I know I'm so sad that the the Poland event got canceled. So like, I'm not, oh, man, I'm big sad. I know. I've been thinking about I want to rent like the big skid pad for a private day or Grange. Yeah. For another private. That was so fun. Just like ten cars and all the homies. Yeah. Like, so good. So much seat time too. Yeah. The, the secret panic day. Yeah, that was good. I just want to get as much seat time as I can so I can actually like drive with you guys. Yeah. I, like I'm averaging like two events a year and that's just not enough. It's enough no. to like get comfortable and start to get consistent. And then, and then you, you have know, to start drive over. for another six months. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's also hard too, because we've for years and years, Julian <clears throat> borrowed trailers, borrowed trucks, like borrowed this, that, and the other. And now we finally have a truck. We have two trailers yeah. and three drift cars. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like Julian's now's, car now's will always, time. yeah, well, Julian's car will always make it because we have a truck and a trailer, yeah. but not a second truck to tow my car or, you know, whatever other car that needs what to go the, to the yeah. event. So the Z is registered. We're though. getting there. Yeah. There you go. It's, yeah. Man, I haven't driven to a drift day and drifted and then driven home in a long time. Yeah. I think the last, I remember, didn't you drive the S14 with the 4.6? Yes, I did. Hill? And I just stumbled upon, upon that video of like them rolling up next to me. And I'm like, <laughs> just going down, going down five, just so loud. Yeah, My like brain 4, was just like RPM. scrambled. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's not fun. No. There's like, it. there's like driving to a drift event in like a street car and drifting the street car and driving to a drift event in a drift car where you're like you're like exhausted by the time you get there i have driven a few wild times one of them julian's drift car had no tail lights yeah and it was dark <laughs> and i had to drive home from thunder hill two and a half hours left foot braking lightly enough to make the brake lights go on but not hard enough to brake yeah. so i had tail lights uh... the whole drive no dash lights Headlights, but nothing on the inside, so I couldn't like see the tack. You know damn well the speed 
speedo doesn't work. They no. never fucking work. <laughs> but I had to guess how fast I was going. Left foot break for the lights, but not too hard. And, you know, try not to get pulled over with the SR all in one. Like, just... <laughs> All because Julian was too tired because he'd been drifting all day. Mm. Sounds convenient. Yeah. Story of my life. <laughs> what a... I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the last time I drove my car to a drift event, I was driving home and I hit a bump and all the lights went off. <laughs> and I was like, it's like pitch black. <laughs> like dash lights, headlights. And it's like, <clears throat> actually, you know, I checked the fuses. It's not I'm like, whatever i'm just gonna if i get pulled over i get pulled over what am i gonna do like yeah. i guess i guess i probably should have called AAA. that would have been the responsible thing to do but you know you don't want to i've had my a car was car. slammed and I'm like, <laughs> i've had a car towed from thunder hill all the way home from AAA. a oh i went for like one of my first drift days and my clutch blew ended up leaving the car at thunder hill for like a week and then going back up there to meet AAA and I had like a hundred miles or whatever mm -hmm. and I was able to make it work. And then I had to make sure they brought the flatbed because it was lowered with a welded diff and like the whole fucking thing. They're not supposed to take modified cars. Yeah. So like we had to sweet talk the guy and then, and then he tells us, damn, you guys live out here. You're way out here. And in my head, I'm like, you're from fucking Willows. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> about? You're fucking way out there. <laughs> <sighs> I yeah I lost my keys at the last at the last was that the last time I was there mm, no like the <clears> second <throat> to last time I went to Thunder Hill for amateur drift series I got third I was like super hyped and like packing up the trailer I'm like where are my keys Tor I had already packed the cars on the trailer the Forerunner was packed full of like all my tools and everything because I like did a diff swap and so like everything was out and I go and the keys to the Forerunner the keys to the Forerunner oh my god. It's like the last thing you want to deal I, with at the end and there's of the like day. A, yeah, there was like a bunch of people there and I was like, I'll give you 20 bucks if you can find my keys. Like whoever <laughs> finds my keys gets $20. I had like 10 people looking. No one could find them. I'm like, They were somewhere so stupid. No. I, had, I I went on Yelp and found that there was a locksmith in Willows and I called his, it's like this dude, I forgot what his name is, but it's like the company's called Lock, Billy. Lock and Roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, he's like an old, like, he's like an old stoner dude. And he like came Sick. out and he's like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, but I'll try, man. Like <laughs> I was like, okay, like I'll believe in you. Like, not like I have a fucking choice, you know? So you really like lost lost. Yeah. Him. Yeah. He oh like cut God. me a key and like programmed it. And then like at first, like the battery had been Sketchy. on, for, like the doors have been open for a long time. And so like he like started, he's like, oh, I don't know if this key's right. Cause it like was like cranking for a long time. I was like, I think the battery is just dead. Like, can you like start it? <laughs> uh man uh that just reminded me julian one of julian's like i think it was probably his second event up at thunder hill he did one when we were still in high school mm -hmm. drove his shit all the way up to thunder hill didn't tighten his lug nuts enough and one of his rear wheels flew off and he ripped off a, like a lug stud or two and like that was his first experience drifting <laughs> And he was so More excited to go. To he was so excited to go. And at our school, like we went to a podunk, tiny little school, like less than 200 kids in the whole school. Yeah. And everybody knew that Julian was into drifting and nobody really knew what drifting was back then. So if you heard yeah. drifting, you immediately thought of Julian Jacobs yeah. and everybody, like all of the friends knew he was going to this event. We didn't really know what it meant or what the fuck he was doing, but, or most people didn't. And yeah, he goes and then he comes back to school and everybody's all stoked to see how it went. And he's like, fucking wheel fell off. Like, <laughs> I don't know the whole story. He's probably going to say I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And then his second event, go back to that flat black hatch with the SR that we shared that I used to drive to my makeup job. He it took him like months to swap the SR into that thing in our tiny little shitty garage. And the morning of he's getting ready to go. Oh no, this was um motoring J style yeah. out in Vallejo. Yeah. We were going to one of those. My friend, my friend Mac was like help put that on. He lost his keys right before we were supposed to leave. And he was like, when Julian's mad, he makes this sound and it's like, Ugh! and he's I so big, sounds... it's like a very aggressive sound. And I had yeah. one of my like new girlfriends was gonna come with us, and she was like kind of new to coming around, and here's giant Julian fucking screaming like the Hulk, just throwing shit around the house, trying to find the keys, like losing his shit, so upset. And the whole time they were like on top of the toolbox, like <laughs> totally obvious spot. Like 
<laughs> but there's this thing that happens with Julian where he's so tall, he'll put stuff up high and yeah. then I can't see it. Yeah. So I'm like looking and it's like out of my view. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I find stuff for him immediately, but we couldn't find him. And he like, we were like an hour behind. He was raging. He finally found him and we went and everything was fine. But yeah, Ashley still to this day talks about Julian's Hulk sound that he was, ah! <laughs> the anger that comes out. Passionate dude, you know? Oh my God, he doesn't get mad often, but when he does, it's terrifying. Mm. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's usually at himself because he lost something or misplaced it. Mm. I can see how that would be frustrating for him. Yeah. Because of it got to the point it where he, he was losing stuff so often, and then he'd be like, I looked everywhere. And then I would go and like lift up one thing and find it. So I told him, <clears throat> if you tell me you looked for it and then I find it, I get to punch you in the leg. Mm -hmm. and he was like fine and so many times yeah. so many times i just finally stopped punching him because it was getting old and like You're i just like, felt I've, bad <laughs> like i've got enough swings yeah. in at this point my hand is tired <laughs> it's just pathetic at this point <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i mean we're all like yeah i remember like shit i've gotten like very very frustrated or angry like trying to make it to an event or like i can't find something it's like you said though there's so much on your mind and so many different things to think about and shit to gather and stressful yeah and drifters love to be last minute also it's like all we know yeah. except for jason yeah <laughs> Oh, Jason. Jason had like, you know, normal parents that like taught him structure and responsibility <laughs> and all that. Like, he's just lucky. Yeah. He does have his family's so nice. So nice. They're the best. Yeah. Man, and they make some mean fucking falafel wraps. Ooh. It's my favorite. Shout out. Shout, shout out, out to Kelly. <laughs> shout out to Julius. <laughs> yeah. I think that's like, I came, I can't remember what it was. Oh, I came to buy a kit. Jason sold me like my first kit for my s13 and i went there and got like a sandwich and like i was like so good yeah those like, cookies I like, okay, too I go back paul's cookies are no joke yeah jason's mad because i haven't been there in like a very long time he's like you have you haven't gone to the deli in so long I should probably I, go there <clears throat> i go every chance i get and i call and andrea always knows it's me and she knows exactly what i want and then i go in and everybody says hi and That's VIP. all the others think i'm like a celebrity i'm like oh, no big deal Who, me? i'm just, oh. just kind of like family no big deal <laughs> <laughs> thank you for my special falafel i was at the wedding don't worry <laughs> oh fucking borrego that was a fun wedding yeah that was a fun wedding <clears throat> Jason did donuts. That was the that was the first and last time Jason will ever do any kind of anything hard on his car when it's not warmed up. Oh, that probably killed him. Yeah, he's like, I have to do heart. it. I have to do it. <laughs> so they like after the wedding ceremony, they like went and got in his car, and he did, ripped like a little like you know like two little donuts on the street because it was like in a front yard. They did it in like a front yard of this like really cool house in like the desert. And, uh, so cool. He wrote, wrote <clears throat> those like the, one of the coolest houses I've ever like it wasn't like a big house it was just it's like a weird like a 50s characters. like architecture gran Francesca's grandma's house I think her aunt it's, a, it's her aunt's house or was her I don't know we suck at this yeah, house. Was, I don't <laughs> it was know, a really but, cool house it was whoever cool it was house. yeah so they like, did a whole thing and then Jason <clears throat> did like two like cold donuts so he like couldn't even get up to like rev them there <laughs> it was like, brrr, <laughs> like two donuts and then he took off down the street the best was right before right before the ceremony jason's like there's a there's a street spot i want to hit that i've been eyeing they went to go take pictures because like uh benson and nadine actually shot like they did yeah. the photography for the wedding and they don't usually do weddings which is cool and uh, they were like, oh, we went because they have like all these big metal structure, like these, like it's like a big dragon. That's yeah, like art installation type. Things. Yeah, it's like I don't know, like a hundred foot long, like track steel dragon that's all rusty in the desert. And so they went like they drove the car to go, <laughs> they drove the car to go take pictures and they're like wedding attire or whatever. <clears throat> and then Jason's like, well, I mean, I'm pro I'm gonna hit that left when we leave. <laughs> and so like <laughs> lit, like I swear to you, not even like. 40 minutes before they like walked out and did the whole like wedding ceremony wedding. jason was drifting <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man i remember the coop was supposed to be part of the wedding but then michael drifted it the bachelor weekend at thunder hill before and crashed it yes 
<laughs> yes, that was the thing. And Jason like wasn't even didn't even like get that mad. Shout out to D Magic. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the joint bachelor bachelorette party too. It yeah. was. Yeah. And then yeah, so like Jeff Pitts, who started like NorCal drifting events what officiated the wedding and everything it's like it best. was like very yeah he did such a good is job. the best yeah i want to get him on here too yeah that'd be awesome he'd be, he'd be great he'd be good i found an old thunder drift sh- t-shirt the other day nice it's like i need to bring this back yeah crop top it up you know those were the good old days yeah i like i got in like the very end of thunder drift with like Luis and andy and thomas mm. like just very silly days oh thomas Ooh, so fun and Luis, they're they're all yeah. ridiculous. Luis cracks me up. I miss him drifting. He hasn't he hasn't been around in a while. The, yeah, the booger. Yeah, his drift car. T Corolla. <laughs> yeah. With I think it's like yeah I think it's like a sixteen valve T Corolla, and then like uh, Thomas had a SR eight six. Yeah, and Andy had the beams or something. He had he had an SR Miata. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that little thing. That yeah. was like the only Miata I've ever thought was cool. Yeah. That thing was like back in the day. Yeah. It and it was good. Had like huge low offset wheels and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all good drivers. It's just, it's just like as time goes on, you know, like. It's crazy back then, too. There wasn't like the skid pad, really. Like we were on Thunder Hill, like the full yeah. track. Like. I I explain that to people often when they go like why you know what, what's the deal with them and like why they try like why can they do I, I don't know I always go when they started like there wasn't they didn't start like I mean I'm sure they did like street stuff here and there but like they would go to like a fucking very fast racetrack and yeah. try and drift the whole thing I took my S14 out once when we rented it out for Super D. I and remember. I got on the straight and it was like, <laughs> and I was like, nope, I'm going back in. Like, I'm going to die. <laughs> my car is not meant to go this fast. <laughs> I think I was near, I think I was near the start line because I remember seeing you go out and I was like, yeah, go Phoebe. And then you came, I saw you, I saw you go by. And then like, not even like three minutes later, I saw you like driving back to the pits and I'm like, how was it? You're like, nope. <laughs> No fucking thanks. My car so, was so rough after so many people driving it and beating the shit out of it. Yeah. Nope. We'll yeah. just stay slow on the skid pad. It'll get cleaned up. <laughs> it's about to be real good. Yeah. And then nobody's going to fucking drive it. Except you. Except for me. Nice. <laughs> you tell them. No more sharing. Yeah. Yeah. That car got shared a lot. I've driven it a few times. Yeah. Like, it yeah. got pretty much like totaled last time I shared it. So. Yeah not gonna happen again i see <laughs> well, it's always a tough one it's yeah tough one. it's i feel like um like i want people to drive my car because i want them to like feel it because like a lot of the a lot of my friends aren't like being like bmw people i'm not even really a bmw person uh... i think i guess i'm turning into one <laughs> slowly <laughs> uh i think right. shami's more of a bmw person than i am if that makes sense. Well, her BMW is way cooler than yours. <laughs> it's a lot faster. <laughs> That's so sick she got that. I'm like, do you want to do like a autocross day in it or something? Or like a HPDE thing? Like kind of like get the hang of it? She's like, yeah, I'll go. Like, yeah. She's like, I want to do a track day. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Dude, let me know. I'll go with her. Yeah. It'd be so fun. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I mean... Yeah. Uh, anyway, so like I I always want people to like experience it, but then at the same time it's like it is kind of a risk. It's risky. Yeah. But like any of the teammates, like all the unless it's like a real homie that you know is gonna help you fix it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah, I've gotten to that point <laughs> where I'm like, oh, I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah. Also, like I I feel sketchy driving other people's cars. Like I don't want to fucking crash somebody else's car you know like, yeah i definitely drive pe- other people's cars like a little more conservatively i guess you could say yeah like i just bad magic all had me drive as like you know it's pretty much like a pro car Machine, yeah. yeah and it's like he loves that car so it's like yeah i would never drive one of matt's cars he's 
He Fair. loves his car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll drive it. It's okay. Fine. <laughs> Why not? I think, yeah. I, I mean, you're close to Sonoma. I mean, you can just, I feel like once you're thing, going like the weeknights and. Yeah. Sonoma's like the fucking wait times are so long. I yeah. don't have a cage in my car. So yeah. I do the single run. Yeah. And like, it's just, they're so strict. And like the staff at Sonoma is so fucking rude. And like, it, it's, it makes me not want to go there just because like these old tweakers that they have fucking running the track are so rude. Like they're for no reason, you know, they're just constantly yelling at people. Like, I don't, I don't want to be around that. I'll yeah. drive the two hours to Thunder Hill CG pits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, not my vibe. I think that, I think it's like, yeah, I think it's become like a very us first step mentality at that track for some reason. I think it's because they're used to dealing with like a lot of spectators and they're they don't when it's like wednesday night they treat the spectators like or they they treat, treat the, drivers. the drivers like spectators yeah. and it's like yeah you know i'm sorry i'm blocking xyz or whatever but yeah. it's like it, yeah it doesn't have to be like that i've been kicked out of sonoma a few times i got kicked out of sonoma for going i was driving mad magic all he was like doing the winter jam call and he wanted to contest his round and like the pits and the judging booth are very far away from each other like it's like a five minute drive if unless you go up this like fire road so, <laughs> so it's a like fire road it's like the fire road you know and like he contested his thing and whatever and that's like and uh the guy one of there's like there's like a few people there that are pretty cool right yeah he like he like pulled over next to me he's like hey man i'm like what's up and he's like so that thing you just did, you did that in front of the wrong person, man. Like, you got to go. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Fine. Girl, this is a fucking forerunner, man. This yeah. is meant for this. <laughs> it's a fire <laughs> run. It's not like I rock crawled up there. I didn't drive up the fucking stands. Yeah. They, they'll throw you out for sure. Yeah. It's, it's so tight, too. Yeah. I mean, it is like a big international raceway and... We're used to. Like, I think we're spoiled too because we're used to hosting our own events. Yeah. And like Thunder Hill is so chill, you yeah. know, because we've gained their respect and trust up there. So yeah. it's like when you have rules and people barking at you and shit, it's like. Yeah. Well, especially when it's just for like a skid pad thing. It's like, okay. Like I don't get it if we're driving on the big track and if we're going for like, you know, you got to have your rules and stuff. But yeah. I, I also do think that some, like a lot of the people who come to spectate, like are not quite as like dedicated to drifting or fans it's like a lot of people just come in to just check it out and sometimes they're a little less uh i guess easy to deal with maybe yeah. for the security people and they like sure. have this mindset but eh, whatever i don't know i'm gonna go there more just because it's available yeah maybe when i get a cage in my car yeah a little tandem It'd be sweet tear it up yeah dude show them what's up <laughs> Show these kids who's boss. <laughs> the OGs. Yeah. OG Phoebe. We're really just OG Phoebe. Old. <laughs> OG Phoebe pod pod daddy or whatever it's called. <laughs> pod mom, pod boss. Pod, you're the pod daddy. <laughs> <laughs> the palmcast daddy. <laughs> uh, welcome back to the palmcast. This is pod daddy. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about stuffing. Oh, oh my god. Why? Why? Oh, my cheeks are hurting. Why is that a thing? Mm. It's a thing that people like shit. There's a lot. I mean. I was just going to say. Uh, people like there's, shit and they like stuff as there's well. There's multiple options of where you can stuff also. Oh. <laughs> You'd think they'd charge more for the other, but they don't. <laughs> Earmuffs, kids. Uh, Earmuffs. <laughs> why i'll i'll send you some i'll screenshot some i'll log on dust off the old login <laughs> <laughs> oh my god see how many poop dms i've gotten <laughs> see like <laughs> oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry for the people listening to this right now <laughs> I mean, hey, get your money, girls, but like, oh, fuck. 
Charge more money, girls. Yeah, know your worth. Seriously. Listen For to more. Listen real. to Car- listen to fucking Cardi B. All right. <laughs> <laughs> know your value. I mean, I guess they got if they got a system, they got a system. But like. Hopefully they got a stamps.com account and they get some kind of discount for the shipping on yeah. those $2 stuffers. <laughs> uh, like, uh, a commercial account or something. Somewhere, somewhere there's like dudes at work on their lunch break, like talking about like the like used panties that they bought last week. Somewhere there's someone that's going to be listening to this episode and they're going to feel personally attacked. Yeah. They're going to like, dislike. Oh, oh. <laughs> dislike. I do that. <laughs> hey, sorry. I hope whatever, they got a good whatever. deal. I hope they got a good deal. As long as you're not hurting anybody. If yeah. You're, you're, you're giving them your money. It's a business transaction. Everybody's money is she, green. She's getting paid or he's getting paid and, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever it may be. <laughs> Maybe I should have tried to sell Julian's underwear instead. Hmm. I might have better luck. I feel like with some body shots to some dudes, you know, like they're all ripped and holy. <laughs> I don't know. He does have a six pack. So annoying. He's like, I'm going to stop eating cheese because I feel like my stomach's getting a little fat. And then he he didn't even stop. He just cut back a little bit on cheese. And then yesterday he's like, look, my six pack's back. And I just like look down. Julian's the, like, Julian's the only person on the planet who has a six pack and like eats burritos for every meal. So annoying. Yeah. We started working out and like. You know, I'm just like trying to get abs and a booty. Like I don't, I'm not trying to work same. out anything else. And fucking same. Yeah, and Julian's like doing squats, and like after three workouts, he's got like this fucking just dump truck, and I'm like, <laughs> where's mine? Like, when's mine gonna come? Like I'm starting from scratch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 working with a Hank Hill. So <laughs> yeah. I got a long way to go. Like even if I get like a little, like a little fucking. <laughs> little round to it i'd be happy just keep your pants up yeah exactly <laughs> everyone's like why do you sag i'm like because i don't have a butt it's not my choice i don't i, I wear a belt it just doesn't work you're gonna have to get some suspenders i have thought about it i've lit i've seriously you know how embarrassing that is man i have so i have such a small you butt like have them hidden suspend. under your shirt <laughs> i've thought about like yeah well how am i supposed to wear a t-shirt then you just have to wear it over then you just have to wear overalls you have to tuck your shirt in then. I'm just going to start wearing overalls. <laughs> Crisscross them. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? You guys ready to drift or what? Oh my God, it's so good. <sighs> I'm going to pull up to the next event in overalls. If I remember, I probably won't remember. You should. They'll probably be too short. <laughs> You'll have them That's up the here problem. and they'll be yeah. too short. That's the other problem. Yeah, like snowboarding. Remember when like snowboarding pants or like were really baggy yeah yeah like <laughs> they'd be baggy the they're like short. super baggy but short and then like I'd be like I'd, if you put on a pair of Nauki's pants <laughs> yeah those are pretty cool except i don't think they have like tall they don't have like my leg sizes in japan no my legs are longer not. than julian's you would need like a zipper at the bottom to zip on another extension <laughs> yeah that'd be sick like the zip off shorts yeah because like well back then it was like really cool to have like the like the the your pants like all like bunched up at your shoes that was like the thing and like i'm super tall and i have like really long legs (laughs) so there was no pants that i could do that with so i was like well if i want the bunch you just got little capris (laughs) yeah it's hard out here for tall guys it is it really is Jul- did julian not hit his head he on the cracked fucking- his head that was he didn't scream though normally he does the sound when he hits his head on that thing because ah! ah! <laughs> yeah. he knows it's there but he still hits his head on it yeah no this world is not meant for tall people yeah they don't accommodate you guys at all no sucks when julian and i first started dating i uh, multiple times made the mistake of thinking we could fit into places to sleep like yeah. one time i was like we'll, we'll just sleep in the back of the ford expedition like that i can fit in there mm-hmm. oh boy was he mad his like this much of his legs were hanging out and then he tried to go sideways he was so mad at me and i was like i'm sorry you know think like a six foot seven person <laughs> there's like nothing worse than uh sleeping in a like spot that's like just a little too small as like a tall person that happens often. <laughs> uh, 
You know what else is rough? Being a tall person's girlfriend and then always having to sit behind them in whatever car you're riding in with your mm, friends because yeah. you have to suffer since he's so tall. He has to put the seat all the way back. Yeah. Most of the time I'm pretty lucky, but sometimes I'll have to like put one leg to the side and like yeah. let him come in his head's like right here. Yeah. He just wants you to know how we feel on airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the airplanes are rough. Usually the flight attendants are like, oh, you want to move? And like, See, me. he's lucky because he's, well, he gets hit on. Define like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I've been there for that. I'm like, what so about I, me? I Dude, love I'm it. Tall. I love it. Uh, Julian, yeah, Julian definitely gets, and he's like, <laughs> so awkward. He's like, no, he's not awkward, but it's just like, it's like, obviously that he doesn't like, he's like nice, but like awkward too. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. But yeah, it happens. It happens. I'm like, get those free drinks, babe. Yeah. Keep them coming. <laughs> I, if I'm with him and we're on a plane, we always get moved. Yeah. Both of us. But if I'm by myself, they like never move me. Because I'm when I'm sitting in the seat, I'm like not, I don't look that tall, I guess. Because like my torso is not that you tall. You got to just hang your leg out and oh, not yeah. bring it back in until they run into it so many times. They're like, yeah. okay, this guy's got to go. They moved us. Where were we flying? I think it was when we were on our way back from the like Blood Masters Invitational. We went to hang out just on back. But like. And like the front street guys, they moved us like into these like legit seats. Man. It was so sick. Where were we? We were, I think we were coming back from Fiji and our layover from New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, after the baller VIP lounge. That was the... with the guy that was hitting on you guys for being so tall. Oh, he was, he was, <laughs> and he was like trying to get us drunk tall too. Tall drink of water. He was trying to get us drunk. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they gave us, they moved us and gave us the spot like in front of the wall. You yeah. Know, that, like extra big one. Yeah, yeah. And then I fell asleep and I was like shivering and I woke up to like this really nice Fijian woman like giving me another blanket. I was like, oh, you guys are so sweet. I love your water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in case you were wondering what kind of water they have at the airport in Fiji, it's Fiji water. It's Fiji. Yep. Yeah. And then you can buy Dasani for like two more dollars <laughs> if you want. And if you ever get stuck at the airport in Fiji for eight hours or however long we got stuck for eight there. hours, you cannot go adventure around Fiji. You have to stay there, but they have the VIP lounge, which is a hundred dollars, their money, $48 our money. Yeah. And all you can eat food, drinks. That was a good time. Showers. We definitely like decompressed from the trip on that. In that. Yeah. That's place. the server was like flirting with, you guys so julian and you so hard yeah i loved it yeah he's like you guys deal with it for he months. like definitely wanted us to he definitely wanted to show me and julian around the island you know <laughs> it's like do you go and come see this back room yeah oh my god and then i got that massage there was like they had like a little spa where you could get like facial massage yeah. or whatever and i love massage so i go in to get a massage and i choose like the neck and shoulders and it's this like big Fijian woman and she wasn't as friendly as the lady on the plane. That's for damn sure. But she had like one of those chairs, you know, where you like put your face in and you stay sitting up mm. and like the window was frosted out to the lounge. And then you walk in front desk and there's like uh, pedicure stations. And then just this chair, like not behind a wall or anything, just right there. And she's like, okay, go ahead and sit down. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like whatever. Keep my, my shirt on clothes on yeah. and then she's like uh, you need to take your shirt off and i'm like oh okay like any, someone could walk in at any moment and i'm yeah. like all right it's fine i got a sports bra on and the chair's right here so I take my shirt off and then she's like no you need to take your bra off too and i'm like there's no towel like on the leather chair thing whatever it's made out of and i'm like am i getting punked right now like what's going on so i like I'm just like I feel so small next to this woman and she's demanding me to take my clothes off and I'm like she's not handing me a towel normally when you get a massage they like cover you and like yeah. it's like a very respectful thing guess not in Fiji they don't care so I like take my sports bra off and I'm like and then she like just pushes me against the chair <laughs> so it's just like my bare tits against this like fake leather and she's massaging me and they're like Arr! <laughs> it was like the most uncomfortable i was so uncomfortable and i was just like waiting for someone to walk in and i'm just like ee, like hey just, just getting smashed up against the chair i it was like the most uncomfortable massage i've ever had and then i was like how am i gonna get my shirt back on like and more ladies walked in yeah 
worst twenty dollars I've ever spent on a massage. <laughs> I don't think I've ever spent any money on a massage, but I feel like I should. Oh, you should have went to that one. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. I felt so violated when I came out. I was laughing so hard. I couldn't even tell the story. While I was in there, though, I was like, this is going to be a great story, even though I'm really embarrassed. Yeah, I like the sound effects. It <laughs> yeah. really made the story. <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah, it's like all, it's all the little <laughs> stuff that we get to do on these like trips where we go. Like even, I don't know, even if. Like for New Zealand, I got to drive for four minutes or maybe 15. And most of that was me getting pulled out of the fucking gravel. <laughs> uh, yeah, New Zealand was amazing. Yeah. Everybody's so sweet there. The house was amazing too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that one, that was pretty crazy. They like let us stay at like their Take over house. their whole house. So yeah. sweet. Yeah. I mean, how often do you get that? So nice. And those big ass doors that just open up the whole wall of the uh, house and then you're just like patio. Like, oh, so good. Yep. Maybe one day we'll, when we grow up, we can have like a cool house with a giant shop next to it. My luck, it'll be, my house will be the shop. <laughs> <laughs> it'll just be one corner of it. Like, well, so we own commercial property. No one can know that we live there. We don't live there, which there a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's common. <laughs> super common i don't know i don't know yeah i don't know what the next the next phase looks like i guess just enjoy what we got while it's happening yeah i definitely have no idea definitely didn't expect you guys to get married and then me either <laughs> a low, or elope and then get married like within like two months and you never know what's gonna happen next i tried to go change my name the other day but the social security is like appointment only because mm -hmm. of covid and they're like months and months out for appointments so I'm not gonna be phoebe jacobs anytime soon mm. just on social media mm. <laughs> yeah and when you tell people your name so they don't i mean people mess up the spelling of phoebe i can only imagine the spelling yeah. of your last name no it's yeah they struggle with the first name so i'm i'm happy to get rid of mignani because it's a pain in the ass yeah and like i don't have any family with that name anymore anyway yeah so i'm fine with it yeah I'm really annoyed though. I went to one of my deliveries on Friday at work and I went to sign in and there was a fucking Phoebe J signed in. The last person signed in was Phoebe J. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> fucking kidding me? What? There can only be one. And then did you also know that there's a girl on the East Coast named Phoebe and she has a blue WRX and a S14 drift car? What? <laughs> It's like I can't have anything. I can't have anything. Small world. I know. That's that's I'm not as unique as I think. <laughs> that's a that's alternate universe, Phoebe. Yeah. But not in the same universe. I don't know. There's there's like a time warp somewhere that got fucked up. <laughs> Her cars probably run. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Well, her husband probably is it. That's good at drifting. I don't know if she has one. Mm. I just guessed. I, <laughs> I hope you find somebody out there, Phoebe. <laughs> if that's what you want, I hope you get what you want. Man. Are you going to drive Good Luck League next yeah. weekend? Oh, the, the... 31st? No, my club. No, no. Going camping with Jason and Francesca. Oh. Yeah. They always try to get us to go camping and Julian and I don't do that. Yeah. I'm like, we'll get a hotel five minutes from the campground. And <laughs> see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like as a tall guy, camping's like yeah. not exciting, I guess. I don't know. It's like already like uncomfortable sleeping in regular beds and like yeah. hotel beds. And His back does not. Camp. Yeah. We just went though. It wasn't that bad. I camped at uh, Grange after we got drunk. We, so, like, we drifted till 2 a.m. And then we drank until, like, 5. You guys left because they were closing the gate. And yeah. you guys had to go to the hotel. But we drank till 5. And then I then I pitched a tent on top of my trailer. And I, <laughs> I literally just went in there with, like, a sleeping bag and, like, passed out. And I woke up the hot like because it was it was super hot i yeah. woke up like the hottest i've ever been in my entire <laughs> just life cooking in there. and like super dehydrated and just like 
water. Oh yeah, you were feeling rough on the way. You had to stop and take a nap. That's yeah. when we parted ways. Yeah, I was like, you guys go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sleep this one out at the truck stop. Try and find me a nice oh, truck God. stop lady. A little uh, lot lizard. <laughs> Why don't you come over here and keep me company? My name's Billy. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the door for you. Oh my God. Fuck, that's not cool to make fun. You know what, dude? Again, business transaction. Two people are happy. I hope. Yeah. Hope for the best. Yeah. Hopefully she's charging more than $2. Yeah. Yeah. For that kind of stuff, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> uh yeah uh i don't know what i'm gonna drive next i need to i actually killed my clutch at final bout and then that whole day at grange my clutch was slipping like well at least we got to drive at night so it wasn't super hot on yeah. top of it it was like the craziest weather at any drift event i've ever been to it was like thunderstorms but in the distance and then it was like like warm drizzle rain yeah that kept crazy. like coming and going and it was literally like it was like tropical yeah, I loved it. I loved being warm at night because it gets fucking cold out there yeah. at night. Like you'll be yeah. dying during the day and the sun goes down and it's freezing. Like it could not have been better. Yeah, it was perfect. I think I made it until like 1230 and then I just could not stay awake yeah. after all the driving that we did to get there. Oh, yeah, because you drive, you guys drove straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got there at like 6 p.m. I think. Yeah. What time did you leave? Uh we didn't leave till later in the day. No, we left at um, like six in the morning. Yeah. Six, six in the morning, got there at 6 p.m., drifted till 12.30. Yeah. Julian drifted until the very, very end. Yeah. And I passed out in the truck. That was pretty cool. We had like, if you, yeah, it's like one of those things where you like kind of, kind of had to be there, but it was like. Everyone would go out and they'd do like a session by themselves of like trying to throw backies. And then everyone was like kind of like cheering them on like with beers in hand. And then like that person would come off and their tires would be done or their car would be like done or whatever. And they'd like park it and go grab a beer. And then they'd go cheer the on like the next person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. I, I hope I hope everyone gets to do stuff like that. Yeah, private days are what's up. If you have enough friends to rent out a skid pad or a track, fucking do it. Yeah. It's the way to go. Yep. I don't know how long it's been, but it's six. We did a palm cast. We did. Thanks for having me. This I'm, was exciting. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I finally got to do one with you because this has been like a goal for a while and we just kind of like... Well, yeah, you showed up a couple of weeks ago and I was like haggard as fuck, like in my weekend attire, <laughs> like hair up all. And you're like, want to record? And I was like, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that we didn't because I didn't have like all the stuff and I would have. You didn't have your Prime sponsor yet? <laughs> yeah. Sponsored by Amazon Prime. Yeah. I actually like tested all the stuff yesterday and then it wasn't working and I was like, I'll figure it out when I get there. <laughs> It'll probably be okay. That's yeah. the theme of animal style. You know, I'm embracing that more and more. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay. <laughs> it usually works out. Yeah. <sighs> well, I hope it recorded okay. But it I'm, like hasn't been recording I've this been, whole time. <laughs> yeah, I've been like watching them like, is it working? I don't know. It like kind of get like the video gets choppy every once in a while. I'm like, I hope it doesn't record that way. But what are you going to do? Meh. Yeah. You should got the beautiful backdrop of all these fried ass California trees <laughs> dying for some water. <gasps> uh, yeah, I'm happy we did this. I'm going to turn this off now, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't put on pants so I could go to the front of the house for service. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting all this in. That's too funny. <laughs> so I I texted you asking if if we, we could add a password to the end of the episode because I forgot to do that. And you're like, hold on, let me put on pants. And I was like, I need to call her. <laughs> um. So what what do you want the password to be? How about dirty panties.
Nice. <laughs> We got him. You need him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, Phoebe, if you want to get, if you want to get some fifty dollars used, used ones. Gently used. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, I'll sign him if you want. <laughs> okay. Bye, Phoebe. Good shit. Have a good night. You too. Bye. <laughs> Oh, man.